Tonight, let the, let the name of Jesus Christ be to you healing to your body. <laughs> let the name of Jesus Christ be refreshing and strength to your soul. You're going to have to respond. Stand by and watch everybody else do the work get with the program. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know that anybody ever received anything not responding to God. In fact, the reality of it is, is every time that anybody ever received anything from God, they responded to Him. They responded in a realm of faith and excitement and obedience. You people are going to have to become different from all the other people on the earth and start responding to God. Otherwise, nothing will ever change. It has nothing to do with the, the lack of Father's provision because it's abundant. He was just going to have to respond and say, I'll do that, Lord. Yes, I want that. Praise God. That's for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Because I'm certain that everybody in this place realizes it's the Holy Ghost that's talking. I mean, how can you be silenced when God's talking? How is it that God can be speaking and his audience be dumbfounded? Let God ask a question and amen. But God propose a situation. Let God proclaim your answer and shout about it. Amen. Because once again, tonight, Christ Jesus wants to be a healer. Amen. Three amens, four amens, a couple of silence, still a couple of people waving back there looking at me like I'm some kind of freak show. Come on, people. Get with the program. Get closer to the front. If you don't know how to interact with God, you left out in the darkness. Come on, man. Only the dead cannot praise Him. I mean, I know if you're not alive to God, in you, uh, if, you, you're, if your spirit's not alive to God, there's nothing that He's doing that you can receive and function in or move in. It's true. But if you've been made alive unto God through Christ Jesus, I mean, my goodness, you should be fully connected with what's going on around here. Hallelujah. And when, when, when Father puts forth it, you know, tonight in the name of Jesus is the healing for every need in the body. You should be going, yeah. Somebody said, I don't need anything. Well, interesting. That kind of sounds like Revelation chapter 3. I have need of nothing. It's not a good spot to be in. Not a good place. Father, we love you. Father, we want your people to come understand how easy it is to flow in your glory, function in the realm of life and authority. People, when your eyes are open to behold what God's doing, I'm telling you right now, there's, I cannot imagine that there would be any reason that you would do anything else. If your eyes would be open, let God open your eyes tonight. He wants to. It's not like that somehow heaven's deficient and God can't do what it is he said in his word he would do. It said he doesn't have many people that will respond. He doesn't have many people who want these things that he's, which he's doing. And it's over and again proven, you know, it's over and again proven by men's lack of response to God. But tonight, if you just respond to Him with your heart, what, he, what, what, what Papa will begin to do in your life, hallelujah. Ha ha. And I'm telling you, there's no question about it. Let's see if I can pick up on this. There's no question about it. My goodness. Without, without these things of the Spirit being made manifest and revealed to our lives, there is no hope for this nation or any nation. Amen. Praise God. Well, everybody, you can be seated. I'm glad to be here with you tonight. I want to make sure that you get into a place where you can begin to cooperate with God. You can stand there and look at me if you want to, like you're doing it right when you're not doing it right. But I, it ain't going to bother me. I'm going to continue to tell you what you need to hear anyways. Amen. Huh? And then when you start having the fruits of, of God being manifested in your life, then like Father has purposed for you to do so, then we'll all be happy. Amen. Amen. We'll go on to another subject. Praise God. <laughs> There's many of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father wants us, come on, people. Father wants this week to be about us exploring the vast expanse of his authority that he's made available to us. 
You know, people get all excited about it. Amen. People get all excited about these are the days of Elijah. No, do not. These are the days of Jesus. And I, I tell you right now, fact, and to be more specific, these are the days of the Holy Ghost. Uh, these are not the days of Elijah. These are not the days of Moses. These are not the days of Joshua. These are not the days of anyone old. These are the, way, these are the days of this new day, this new thing that, that Elijah, that Joshua, that Moses, that all of those former prophets would just love to be in where we're at right now. I can just see him standing over the balcony of heaven going, my goodness, I wish I was alive right now. I'd show those folks how it means to serve God, walk with them, and do those things that he's purposed for us to do. You know, it is amazing how the Lord brought this great allegory in, in uh, John chapter 15. I'm always amazed of it. I cannot get over it. I've been staring at it for many, many years. And I'm still just overwhelmed by the reality that Christ Jesus is the vine and that we are the branches and that the Father is the husbandman. And I'm telling you, you've got, I mean, at least two of the three are out of just, just completely amazing beyond all comprehension. Christ Jesus and the Father is doing an amazing job. The biggest problem is the branch. We got a great vine, hallelujah, a great, 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 great vine. And we got a great, 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 great husbandman or farmer. Uh, I mean, a vine dresser, praise God, yeah. hallelujah. You know, and the Lord just so sets up our life and our existence in Him. There is never a time that the Lord Christ Jesus is somehow making us other than Him. He's over and again making us one with Him, knitting our lives together with Him in every expression. And we're sitting around basically silent under some gag order. I mean, give me a break. Where is the army? Where is the army of God? I mean, God the Holy Ghost knows how to make men valiant. God the Holy Ghost knows how to make people, those that would yield to Christ Jesus, everything that fathers ever purposed. And the reality of it is, that being truth, we need to understand the place here is, that we need to come to is, is a place of surrender and consecration to Him. And if we will, we're going to have something more than the pathetic situation we find ourselves in today. Amen. Come on, people. I wish somebody would get so stirred up. I wish somebody would get so full of zeal that you wouldn't live like you're going to live more than likely tomorrow. You're going to live every Monday just like you lived it up to this point. Statistics has proven it over and again. You're going to be tomorrow just like you've been every Monday since the, since the day of your birth. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll break the mold of statistics by grabbing a hold of the miracle power that is in Christ Jesus alone. The outworking of the power of the Holy Ghost. You'll say, No! I'm done. I'm off the, I'm off the sad go around. I'm, qu I'm, stop I'm not going to live like a monkey no more. All Darwin did was just basically interpret what he was seeing. That's about all. He just interpreted what he was seeing. Can't blame him too much. I mean, when the church's not shining like a bright uh, light of, uh, with the effulgency of God's divine glory, I can't hardly blame him for what he, the way he went into interpreting what he was seeing. But it's about time for a change. It's about time for the glorious church to begin to radiate with the light and glory of God instead of sitting around like a bunch of pumpkins at Halloween. I said instead of sitting around like a bunch of pumpkins at Halloween. Come on now. Little candle inside, weird looking eyes. Strange smile to boot. Are you with me? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. I command the dead bones to live again. In Jesus' name. People start living by the breath of the Lord. And start walking in the Spirit. I mean, what your body is going to look like when God the Holy Ghost begins to take over. And your spirit, God the Holy Ghost. Oh, Hallelujah. I mean, our spirit has been joined under the Spirit of the Lord, but he's not going to force his way around. He won't. You know, Father has put this allegory together where we're the branch, and he's the vine, and the reality of it is, the branch doesn't exist without the vine. And the vine doesn't exist without the branch. You know, I'm just so blessed to be, and I know some of them are watching me tonight with a bunch of farmers in Iowa, corn country. 
Corn and beans. <laughs> My goodness, there's so much corn. I just, it, and at least they can understand that. People in the city just sit around going, oh, really? You know, can, can, we, be, we might need to look that up in Google or Google it. He might be wrong. We need to check in Wikipedia. Because they're so detached from reality. The vine is no, can't exist without the branch. And the branch can't exist without the vine. And the reality of it is that Jesus came as the vine. And he made a way for you and I to live in him. So that right now his existence may be made known through us. Everybody wants to do it just like they do with the pastor. Oh, pastor, you do everything for us. You shout our shouts. You sing our songs. You do our praise. You cast out the devils. You work the works of Jesus Christ. Let us just sit here and watch it and bask in the presence of the Lord. But it doesn't work that way, folks. Doesn't work that way at all. Because as a spectator, you're just a tater. With a little speck. You with me? You ain't nothing. You got come on, you're underground. God don't have no underground plants over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They all above ground. So that the world around you can see the fruit of it. Amen. People, it's about time you understand. Father wants to give you. An insight to recognize what's going on. People are still, even after such a long time as this, walking after the five senses. They value their life based upon what they have at their house, what they do at their job, what some certificate some man gave to them, some concept of what a social structure and culture has imposed upon them. The eyes have never been opened to behold the angels of the Lord and the, and, and the, and the chariots thereof and the glory and the purposes of God's whose glory fills the earth right now, the divine purpose of the King of Kings, Christ Jesus, who sits upon the throne right now, reigning right at basically cloud level to subdue and bring into subjection all things unto himself. Hope you enjoy your job tomorrow. Your distraction, your detachment from God. Huh? Somebody gets one person saved in 10 years and they think they've had a great breakthrough. People, it's about time you and I begin to understand what Father's done for us and begin to recognize as the temples of the living God, he's made the carriers of his divine power and glory and authority. And we stop living our own lives. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it is so hard to talk to people who think they've already know. It's so hard to talk to people who've already justified their way of living. And that's basically a description of the church in the United States of America. It's about time you start listening with a new hearing, with new ears. You start seeing with the eyes that only God the Holy Ghost can get to you. Recognize that Father baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire so that we would have the ability to break the strongholds of darkness, to set the captives free, to loose out of prison everyone that has been taken prisoner by the powers of hell yes. and sin and destruction. Most of God's people it seems to be just compromised and conflicted one way or the other with the camp of darkness. One way or the other, they somehow entangled with the yoke of bondage. It's about time God's people just get into the shower of the presence of the Lord, get cleaned up, praise God, get washed in the blood, get renewed by the Holy Ghost and say, my, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, 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 Father, I want my eyes to be open. I want to have a compassion and a divine assignment for the lost. I want to recognize that I exist in you and that if I'm not willing to go for you, your existence will not be made known in the, in the, in the earth today. My. Jesus, the Lord Jesus. I hope somebody gets stirred up in this place. And I hope somebody just says, listen, I'm not living this way no more. I'm not living for myself anymore. Not when I've, gotten, not when I've had the privilege to just be, at least you've had an introduction to Jesus. Maybe you don't even know what it means. Maybe you don't even know what it's about. Maybe you've never moved past the introduction to Jesus. You got introduced to Jesus and you went ahead and be, became occupied with your own life. And up to this point, that's all you have. You got an introduction with Jesus and you're occupied with your own life and it's really hard for you to praise him because you don't really know him. It's really hard for you to get excited about all that he's done for you because it's never become a living reality to you. The Father wants to change that tonight. Amen. And, you know, and, and the, the earnestness of God to do it I mean, it, God isn't slack concerning his promises. It's, it's not like he's not pleading with humanity. It's not, it's, like, it's not like he's not pleading with you, for he is. 
It's just that once again, everybody gets to stand in a place before the Lord of, of choosing what it is that they're going to do with their life. You know, I was on the airplane and I mean, the Lord so impacted with me, impacted me with something uh, when I went on this trip because I was, you know, I had all the excuses. I had all the reasons, you know, we're, we're running really, really hard. I'm trying to get all of these edits done for the book, just being on time. So I got on the airplane. I mean, for, well, we were on that airplane for three and a half hours, and I guarantee you when it, before it took off, I was, I was working, and the time it's landing, I was working. I was very, very focused. I did not stop. I did not even look up, and I mean, because that's just the kind of way I do things anyways. And so when I got off the airplane, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I've got this, I've still got these things to do, and, you know, I've got all this stuff in front of me that I've got to take care of, and, you know, a number of issues, and these are all of my excuses. I was all caught up in the things and the cares of this life. Every one of them was ministry in certain concepts of ministry. Every one of them was ministry. But I was so caught up, I didn't have time to do what God wanted me to do that was right in front of me. And I walked by a girl, and there was a bunch of paramedics by her, and I walked by her, and I, see, I knew exactly what was wrong because I saw on her that, sp that spirit of anxiety. I saw it. I could have just walked over to her and said, you go free right now. I didn't have to interrupt anything. They could do all their little stuff, you know, hyperventilating, whatever else they're doing. I mean, not her, them. They were hyperventilating. She was just, you know, in some kind of a panic or whatever. And it would have been done because I could see the evil spirit. I knew exactly what was, you know, I knew exactly what was going on. And I've been equipped by God to deal with everything that Satan is imposing upon people. And so have you. It's just that you're too distracted doing whatever it is that you think is so cool and wonderful and important. That you prioritize as you're saying you're seeking first the kingdom of God. Give me a break. If you believe that, you're the only person and whoever it is is deceived along with you. Because king, doing the work of the kingdom of God is very focused on the ministry, life and the ministry of Jesus. And it's a good thing that Father is devoted to getting it across to us by his help and his grace. I will never be so preoccupied that I will ever, by the help and the grace of God, I will ever once again walk by somebody. I know exactly what the problem is because I'm walking in the discerning of spirit. I know exactly what's going on in their life because I've got the word of knowledge. I know exactly what's taking place because I have the discerning of spirits. I know exactly what God's purposed me to do because the work of miracles and the gifts of healing of my life. And, and not do it. And I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be a valiant people in this place. Because I'm going to tell you right now, God's going to raise them up, um, raise them up uh, himself, a mighty army of valiant people. Who know how to do something more than just sit there and beat their gums back and forth. And quote scriptures. Well, that'd be cool if they could quote scriptures, but I, that really isn't it. By and large, people don't even quote scriptures. They just quote what they believe about scriptures. You listen to me. You know, I'm on it. You know, if you can't tell, I'm on it. I'm on a mission from heaven. Amen. Think about it. My Father has purpose that you and I live the life of Jesus. Well, just like a, just, I mean, just as he's, a, just, I mean, his life would be described as a branch while he was alive. And Father would be the vine. And the Holy Ghost would be the husbandman, so to speak. You know, tending him. Do, you know, you could say in some degree, some stretch there, like something like that. Just really understanding that he has really entrusted his ministry to us, the church, and thus baptized us in the Holy Ghost to do it, to be able to have the same burden that he has for lost souls, to have the same passion to go break them out of prison, not to just sit around and study the Bible. Hello. Give me a break. I mean, I love the Word of God. I'm going to give myself to the Word of God every day. It's, I'm going to eat, eat, you know, the, the sweet and delicious and healthy manna from heaven. Have another Bible study. Give me a break. And the Bible study I haven't done you no good up to this point, hardly. Some of you just basically got you back to church, praise God. Some of you haven't, has, hasn't ever resulted in you overcoming sin in your life. Some of you has never resulted in you seeing Jesus hasn't resulted in you having another, a greater understanding about what God's purpose for you to do in to, such a, to such a degree that you then are now engaged in doing it because a revelation has come. Huh? Well, that don't mean I'm going to let up on you. That don't mean I'm going to stop. Amen. 
I'm going to do what Father does. As long as you got breath in your being, I'm going to do everything I possibly can do to get you to wake up and do what God's called you to do. Because this is the glorious life. This, I said this is the glorious life. Amen. This is the glorious life. Amen. It is the glorious life. Hallelujah. I know you haven't participated enough with God to really understand it, but it really is the glorious life. This is a life of joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. This is the life. This is a heavenly life. This is, this is what everybody, I mean, I'm telling you right now, this is the life that everybody would truly desire to have if they could only understand it and see it. Because Father's got the best thing going. It's just the deception, the powers of darkness that have deceived men has blinded their minds so that they think that living in the, in the septic system is the life, the high life. When Father wants us to come enjoy the crystal pure water that's flowing forth from his throne. And there's going to have to be somebody who's going to rise up and start living this life and stop, stop being compromised and conflicted yeah. Yeah. because they don't know how to get over the stinking lust of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had enough move with the Holy Ghost to get over the lust of the eye. Give me a break, man. Man, you need to come and meet Jesus. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You need to come meet the Holy Ghost. He's a, he's a rabbi kaya. He gave you pleasures that I'm telling you right now, your little old lust of the flesh could never supply. Your little weak-minded, you know, can't, can't overcome nothing, you know, disposition, of, you know, weak mental state, weak will and spiritual state. God will come grab a hold of you and fill you with such power and such authority and such love and such excitement about all the things he's done from heaven. You'll stand up on the inside. Yeah. Hallelujah. With a consecration to Almighty God. Satan is doing will be exposed to you. You're going to be carousing and kissing on that ugly thing. Enjoying getting your jollies watching a devil destroy somebody and manifest through their being. As he destroys their soul. That's what all sin is. And men have pleasure in watching demon activity in another human being that is set to destroy the soul. That's twisted. Don't tell me about Nero. I know he was totally insane. I think everybody else is too. It's going to be so blinded, so, so in darkness. Are you with me? And they're willing to sit and take pleasure in the destruction of someone else's soul by a demon spirit. Think about it. That's worse than the Colosseums, really. Hmm? It truly is. Those people had an appetite for watching blood come out of somebody's arteries when their head went off. Ain't too much difference so far as I'm concerned. People sit and watch some demon spirit work through some young girl or young man, whatever the thing may be, it's destroying their body, destroying their being, and eating their spirit and soul out of the core of their very being through that iniquity. And God's people sit around, and that's how they get their jollies and their pleasure. Give me a break. Come on, people. It's about time you and I get, some, get our eyes open. It's about time we get born again. Get a new heart and get a new spirit. I'm telling you, dear folks, it's easy to get over into a realm of deception, believe you right with God when you're just as wrong as ever, any devil has ever lived. Any demon spirit that has ever lived. It's about time God's people get taken prisoner by the power of the Holy Ghost. Huh? They begin to drink of the pleasures uh, that are in his presence. Whew. Begin to understand the opportunity that we have to walk in the majesty and the splendor of his own life and glory. You're not to sit around all mealy math quiet, huh? Amen. Amen. You know, all of a sudden you're going to begin to get a zeal and a passion, that, the zeal that, and the passion that the Lord has. If you don't have fire in your praise because you don't have the fire of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have fire in your prayers because you don't have the fire of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have fire in your passions because you don't have the fire of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have fire in your spirits because there's no fire of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have fire in your emotions because there's no fire of the Holy Ghost. But the fire of the Holy Ghost is available. The fire of the Holy Ghost is available. The fire of the Holy Ghost is available. And it's more than available. It's Father's command. Jesus Christ is desperate about it. Amen. People want to live a, route, live a life of sadness and sorrow, look as depressed as anybody else that needs to be medicated and say that this is the witness of salvation. This is what it looks like to know God. Come on, people. 
You're going to have to get a big enough passion to recognize what's going on, to step up and say, wait a minute, I'm not living for myself. It ain't about me. I'm not going to be all captivated with what's going on in my life. I'm going to tend Father's business. I'm going to do what he said to do. I'm going to shine with his glory. I'm going to move with his authority. I'm going to live in his joy. I'm going to walk in his love. I'm going to walk in his goodness. I'm going to walk in his kindness. I'm going to be about my master's business. I'm going to be sitting at the Father's feet. I'm going to be walking in the Spirit, listening to what God has to say as he's speaking to me every day, trying to show me how to walk in this wonderful, abundant life. Look in your Bibles with me, please, into, in Matthew chapter uh, 9. Hambro said, I'm thinking about giving myself an extra offering tonight, blessing myself because I'm just so blessed that somebody's going to go ahead and preach the Word. Somebody's going to live a consecrated life or not. That the Spirit of the living God can move through them. That the Spirit of the living God can talk through them. That their passions aren't about all the things that belong to a natural life. But their heart and their treasure and their passion and their thinking and their, and their desires are in the realm called heaven. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God for people like me. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in Mark and I'm wondering why the scripture ain't, isn't, doesn't seem to be proper. We're supposed to be in Matthew. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to give up my, I'm not giving up my riches. I love the joy of the Lord too much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you one of the things that excites me the most is seeing God's people filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I, I think the one of the things that gets me more excited is seeing somebody caught, caught away, lost in praise. And nothing that makes me happier. And nothing that makes me sadder than looking at a bunch of Christians being all bottled up with themselves. It's like just disgusting. It's the most disgusting thing I know of on the planet. It's the most heart-wrenching, depressing image that there is. To see God's people sad, sorrowful, sick, diseased, and burdened. My goodness gracious, it's about time somebody understand what the Bible said in its real simplicity about abundant life, about the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. We made better than <laughs> Oh, about rivers of divine expression. Oh, Rabbiah, about the power of the living God abiding, dwelling in us. Be the right temple of the Most High God and understanding what a great and sacred condition we find ourselves in. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you begin to understand what God's done for you. Mind, you begin to understand what the Lord's made available to you. It didn't take much to understand then those things that would violate that, that, that covenant, violate those promises, and violate that love. If you're interested in walking around in fellowship with God, you're going to be interested in understanding exactly what would cause a violation in the spirit or that which would in any way grieve the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to give yourself to anything that, that would cause it to be anything less than sacred or to defile it would be the worst thing you could think of. People all upset about uh, Antiochus Epiphanes who believed he was a manifestation of God himself who went and defiled the temple. Why well, are you defiling the temple? Everybody's all concerned about the Antichrist that makes the abomination that makes desolate the temple. Well, do you make abomination and the abomination that makes desolate the temple? Everybody's wondering about 666 and when God's going to come or what, the, when the end of God's going to come. My goodness gracious, people, have you no clue who you are and what God's called you to do and what the, the battle that rages around you. And somebody begins, and God's people begin to get passionate enough, there'll be somebody that God can raise up as a deliverer to go set Hollywood free, to go take prisoner the media, to go and begin to lay hold on the riches that the, and the wealth that would begin to change the, the circumstance of the way that uh, these various different tools are being used inappropriately. And all this begins with you just taking what you have right now and, and running with it with everything that is in you. Instead of sitting around cogitating, dreaming, fantasizing about what you would do if you had the, pro the, the influence and the wealth. What you would do is a nosedive right to hell. You listen to me. Because if you can't be faithful in a few things, you can't be faithful in much. And a few, you, you're making a mess out of a few things. Look at what a much would do. It destroy you before the morning. Are you listening to me? 
I want to stir you up. I want to help you understand that you're fighting a battle that's worth fighting, that there's decisions being made in heaven by your reaction. It's about time you understand who you serve and start doing it properly. It's about time you start believing who you believe in and start walking with them the way he's ordained it. Come on, people being consumed with the world, look like the world, smell like the world, act like the world, and say you belong to Jesus. Huh? Come on, people. You don't want to be a wolf in sheep's clothing, bad, walking around telling Jesus that you're his, his sheep. When in reality of it is, you're in your heart, there's nothing but a desire for lust and iniquity. <coughs> don't let that be in this place. And then don't let, yourself, uh, don't let yourself be conflicted or compromised by the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world. Because if you do, what's going to happen is it's going to keep you from bringing forth fruit. You know, you're not going to bring forth fruit. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus, that's what Jesus said in the parable, Matthew chapter 13. That's what he said concerning the parable of the sower. And then he says to us in John 15, if you don't bring forth fruit, you're going to wither and die. And you're going to end up in hell. I don't blame you for not saying anything on that. <laughs> I don't blame you for saying that. I, I don't, I, that's appropriate time to be silent. You know, we're going to train you on every place. We're train you where to be silent. By approving you if you silent there. If anybody shouted hallelujah, I'd be upset. If anybody shouted praise God, I'd be upset. Thank you, oh my, thank you, Lord, for your abundance. You know, that, that would be inappropriate. But when we're talking about all that God has given you, that the name of Jesus is here to heal anybody who's sick, you should be going, wow. You should be going, whoa, this is amazing. If you believe. Otherwise, it's just words. Falling upon ears that are uncircumcised and cannot hear. Yeah. Understand me? Yeah. Just words falling upon hearts uncircumcised that cannot understand. And all that is is an evidence of how distant you are from intimacy with Him. His mercy is still great. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. It's new every morning. Yeah. Praise yeah. God for that. Come on, people. The Lord wants to raise you up. Yeah. He wants to use you in so many ways. There's so many ways to be used. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Huh? And just got to get out of yourself. Yeah. Praise God. Hey, listen, don't, don't be all upset at me if I, if I think that yourself is disgusting. You should too. How, but I think the anointing God the Holy Ghost put on you is wonderful and beautiful. I hope you do too. I hope you get over I hope you decide you're going to go with that. So we can see some of that pretty. So that we can see some of that lovely. So that we can see some of that glory. So that we, uh, it's the joy of the earth. All the earth, all creation groans and travails. Wanting to see some glory. Wanting to see some sonship glory. Wanting to see some manifest glory of those redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I'm just part of creation. Hallelujah. Groaning and travailing to see something. Ha! <laughs> Well, ah, when we see it, all the joy. Woo, and when we see it, all the praise. Oh my, God wants us to so give ourselves over to that which he's doing that we go out with joy. We're let forth with peace in the mountains and the hills. Break forth in the sea because creation sees what it's been looking for. <laughs> some of you haven't even, some of you still got your lips stitched by a demon. Still can't even open up your mouth and say praise God. Still your hands can't even move and clap together. Poor you. Good news is I'm here to break you out of your prison if you listen. But if you want to stay there, you know what? God said you can stay. You want to stay there. You want to stay there. You know, and people just did. They don't understand what's going on in their emotions. They get all excited about what the devil is doing. They all paralyzed about what God's doing. Hello. Hallelujah. Father wants to use you in his kingdom. He needs you in the kingdom. And now is a time that you need it more than ever before. I mean, we are at the, we are at the threshold of some great things that are coming down that are, are great in the realms of the kingdom of God and disastrous in the realms of men. People, they're, they're, we're, you know, everything really, when it comes down to it, in terms of blessing and curses, has to do with men's responses to God, response to the events that are taking place. Whether it's response of obedience, 
or whether it's a response of being able and equipped at that time to, to, to have strength to do something. And you know, we're getting ready to see events that take place. And what Father is doing is he's judging our response to the events. People just act like they can just spend their opinion and, you know, decide what they want to decide and, and act like everything's just casual and ordinary. No, everything that's going down, God's seeing how we're responding to it. That's why my heart always goes and turns to the Word and says, Father, what's the proper response? What's the proper, what's the proper attitude? What's the proper ad- appetite? What is the Holy Ghost doing? What does the Word say we should have? What does the Word say that we should be doing? What does the Word say that we should be believing? Otherwise, Father's going to see me responding just like any other person, just like any other human being, just like any other devil. My response is wrong. There's events that are taking and ready to take place that God's going to have to be, have a people who are seeking Him, who are crying out to Him, yeah. Yeah. who are desperate about being involved in the things that He's doing and the things that He's involved in right now. <laughs> I'm, I, listen, people, why don't you go ahead and spend your life shouting to the Lord instead of, pre- instead of, preserving, your, instead of preserving your energy? For I don't know what. Instead of conserving your energy, for I don't know what. Why don't you go ahead and be offered up, pour yourself out like a drink offer before God. Go ahead and give him everything. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. See, kind of the to say, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I have to determine. Ain't nobody gonna sit in here acting like you've been acting. I just determine. Anybody leaving out of here gonna be, you know, some deadhead, some little small, lifeless, hard, and and, and uh, good for nothing fruit, because you was grown on a thorn bush. <laughs> you ever seen the orange tree? It's supposed to be orange trees, a thorn bush, and the, or the oranges on them just so. What are you going to do with it? It's hard and little and sour. You can't even peel it. <laughs> I mean, if you did, you wouldn't get much juice out of it because it's dry. It doesn't know how to receive nutrient. It's all mutated. Messed up. Doesn't know whether it's a, doesn't know whether it's a thorn berry or an orange. It's messed up. Cares this life. Cares this life, deceitfulness of riches. I mean, Father's been preaching this message for a long time. And there hasn't been a lot of people in the earth that's listened to him. Praise God, he's a God of mercy. I pray in the name of Jesus for those of you, maybe you're watching by the web right now, or some of you that are in here and you're, you're studying and, you know, and you're, you know, you're in school and supposedly pursuing a, vaca- a, a vacation. <laughs> a vocation. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you don't get trapped like everybody else. I didn't get trapped. Most everybody around me did. I didn't get trapped. I never wanted to do anything but preach. I never wanted to do anything but run with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the fact of it is, Papa just changed my life. I mean, they filled me with the Holy Ghost. I got filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I had that fire in my sound in my voice. I had that fire in the sound in, in the, in the view of my actions and my passion and what I'm doing in every dimension of my life. And tonight I want you to know that the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost is here to give to you the divine ability, to give to you divine strength directly from the Holy Ghost, to go ahead and run with the glory of heaven, to be a full in, fully inducted citizen of the Most High, son and daughter of the living God, fully empowered as an heir and a co-inheritor with Jesus. Amen. I mean, praise God for a couple of hoo-hoos and a couple of hallelujahs. I mean, we're just going to have to go with that. Because unfortunately, that's the statistics. I mean, I just think about it sometimes, you know. I think about the response, you know, uncompromising. You have uncompromising uh, devotion to the moving of the Holy Ghost, and you still end up with a basically it's just a fraction of the people that are going to go on with God. Everybody else is sitting there looking at you. You think, well, my, maybe we should throw the net a little bit, a little bit wider. But we're just going to obey God. We're not living for ourselves. You want to get in, you got an option. You don't want to get in. Your option's about to run out. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. 
<laughs> Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now I want you to just hold your finger on that for just a minute and I want you to run quickly with me to Luke chapter 9 in verse 1 and I want you to listen tonight with a commitment that you are going to be different and you're not living your life like you've been living it and you're going to understand that God has equipped you to start living the life of Jesus and functioning his ministry and now get up and start doing it in Jesus' name. Cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, walk around, walk around with the disposition that you have authority to cure and fix everything that the enemy has tried to do to destroy people. Amen. Amen. Beginning, beginning with your own life, your own house, let your house be a sanctuary. I'd like to walk in your house and fall out under the anointing because the glory is there. I mean, come on. And walk in your house and feel all kinds of strife and get, you know, you know, get the, you know, weird feeling like somebody died in the place. No, I'm kidding in some respects, but in other respects, I'm not kidding. It's people basically just giving themselves over to all kinds of garbage, sit and watch a bunch of filth was born right out of the realms of hell, sit there and streamline uh, the demonic mind, partner up with it, and then they get up from that and they scream and holler at each other, and you know, and my goodness, what the hell they live in. Huh? It's the temple of the devil, it's not a sanctuary of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Nimrod built a temple of, of, for the demonic. Come on, give me a break, people. And then you just go ahead and you begin to give yourself passionately to having everything properly in order in your life in honor and obedience to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm telling you, things begin to shake shape around your life. Huh. It won't be long and you'll begin to see an impact on your cousins. And once you start reaching your cousins, it's all downhill from there. Once you can reach your cousins, you can take nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to have uh, the burden of the Lord for your, for your family on such a level that God is able to give you divine wisdom about what to allow, what not to allow, what things to instruct them in, what things to guide them in and teach them, what things to establish them in, what things to model before them. Many people don't have enough passion with God to get that kind of wisdom concerning that which should be the most important thing to them, their seed. Amen. It's true. A lot of folks just, uh, the, all they're going to do is go to a church and be around a pastor that they can tolerate because they never understood that it's the gifting of God to bring them into divine revelation and divine understanding about how to walk in the principles of the Spirit. So sad. And so this is the state that ultimately re results in a government saying that homosexual marriage is the same as traditional marriage and all the rest of the mess that we're in because the church has abdicated and altogether just about missing. Are you listening to me? Because I'm telling you right now, when there's somebody standing in the land with great authority and power, look at Elijah, he brought down that thing. It existed for a while, but he, just, he busted it. Hallelujah. Ah, one must say, you can always tell when there's one man of God in the land. One man of God in the land to change the culture. Bring down the, bring down the idols and bring down the demonic reign of terror. One man. <laughs> what could the church do if we would just stop be, start being the church and stop, and stop being whatever it is we've been being? Amen. Huh? Amen. Social club. Amen. It's got a Bible. Huh? Excited about music with worship teams. I'm telling you right now, I, there's in the house church of China, there's not one instrument. I've seen not one instrument. And there's not a music team on the planet that can compare to the way they worship. Not a music team in any of the great churches of America that can even hold a candle to the way they begin to sing and worship God from the heart. Hey, it's true, huh? Isn't it true? It's true, ain't it, baby? Ha, bokora sapata yelia. Huh? My goodness, makes me want to move to China. <laughs> I tell you right now, the church is so on fire in China. I can move to China and be happy, I'm telling you. I told Bob, I'll be happy. I'll do it. I'll do the work. No, you stay there. <laughs> to the plow you go, my son. 
Hallelujah. There's a number of places on the earth I can go and just be happy. I can go see signs and wonders and miracles and see people come in to the kingdom by the thousands. By the thousands on a weekly basis. But you know what? The Lord has us here. He has, he has me here shouting at you. Tonight. You know, basically saying, what is wrong with you? Get with the program. Amen. When you look here in, in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples and he gave them power and authority over all devils and, and power and authority to cure all diseases. Amen. You think that? And, and that's the junior club. That's the junior Holy Ghost club. That's the junior club. Because he's going to tell them, you guys are not equipped yet to be my witnesses. You're not qualified yet. You need to go get endued with power from on high. And today we think that being endued with power from on high is so that we can sit around and, and, and speak in a heavenly language and say, I got my blessing that you get yours. No, fire from on high will put fire in your passions, fire in your heart, fire in your emotions, fire in your affections, fire in your song, fire in your word, fire in your prayer. And it's all about the will of the Father and His desperate hunger to, to reach the lost, His desperate love that is committed not to seeing one single soul perish. It's hit very few people's hearts in the churches and the generations of men. Very few. There's been people like John Knox, give me Scotland or I die. Pray and hide, give me India or I die. Father Nash is willing to give his life. I mean, you know, Jesus values his life. I mean, you think about his love and his mercy, he values his life to pray and intercede for us. But even his prayer can't make you do anything. But oh, when you're willing, oh, when you're hungry, oh, you have all heaven at your aid, God looking for somebody who's going to stand for him. Stand up and do what he's called us to do and have enough commitment and consecration to him that when sin and temptation comes along, when devils come to try to conflict you and compromise you and try to strip you of your position, of your anointing, you have the ability to stand and say, no! Amen. Have the ability to cast out devils from your own line. And even better than that, walk in the fire of his glory and the realms of relationship to where that everything Satan does is like a, though it be like a fiery dart, it's quenched. It's quenched by the glory and the presence and the faith and the realms of divine power that is in your life. Yeah. Ineffective. Can't get you. Can't get you. Amen. Dear people, it's time for change. Amen. It's time that the people of God stand up. Yes. It's time that the church be seen in the earth. Yes. All the false witnesses from TBN to the rest of the ends. Yeah. And the H's too. I brought down and the true witness of the power and the glory and the humility and the brokenness and the love and the goodness of Almighty God is being made manifest through the branches that are on His vine bearing forth His fruit of relationship showing that which He's doing. Oh God. We spend our Spend our strength for that which is no profit. Everybody goes do their little exercises and they can't get to church. When they get to church, the church, they're so tired they can't open their mouth and praise. They can barely move around because they don't spend all their energy on themselves. That's true. I can go through the list, but I'm not going to. The Lord looking here in this disposition, because this is the ministry of Jesus. What I did was I showed you the ministry of Jesus in Matthew chapter 10. And verse 35. And then, I, and then I showed you what the purpose of Jesus' ministry in the life of the people that then he raises up to represent him in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. You hear me? Yes. Do I need to say it again? I showed you the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. And then I showed you the ministry and the purpose that Jesus has for everyone who's going to follow him. The purpose has been identified for everyone who's going to be his servant and his disciple in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Are you with me? Yes. Now look at the application. 
Look at the application there in Matthew chapter 9. In verse 35, uh, 36. Well, get 36 is actually on below this. But, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Look at that. You know, our response to God is going to have to be, Father, let us begin to have a different view of the people on I-5 and on I-15 and at the fairgrounds and on the beach grounds and in the shopping place and in the workplace where suddenly we don't see them as somehow a profit for our own lust. Just there to accommodate us. That suddenly we see the situation that they're in. Because I'm telling you right now, if you break it down, people, it's something like that. Something like that. Oh, but should we be arrested by the love of God? Should we be arrested by that which the fire of God would bring into our life? A great compassion, a great insight to see every person's soul the way that Father sees it, to understand each person's life the way that God understands it, to take a hold of the mind of Christ Jesus. This is something that you can't have on your own. You can't think yourself into it. You aren't qualified to do it until you baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. If there's anything that God's people need is to begin to cry out to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire the way that Father intended it to be because we've made something out of it that it's never, He never intended. Because I know it's true because it hasn't brought forth the fruits of His intention as He's described it in His Word. It's not time for people to preach who's got intellectual knowledge. It's time for people to preach that's got practical application and example. Who's got a revelation of it in their life. Who's got the fruit of it hanging on the very spirit. People want to get up with their little psalm and their little proverb and their little dictionary definition. Give some little speech. We're not interested. Don't need it. What's that going to do? We need to see you rise up and start living the life of Jesus and be a living message and be a living epistle and be something that's written of God and read of men. Hallelujah. This is what Father's looking for. It's what he's laboring for. It's why Jesus suffered, bled, and died at Calvary. This is why he came and, and subjected himself to being cruel mockings, cruel mockings, cruel persecution. Subjecting himself even to being tempted, which he had never had to experience because God can't be tempted. He's in another realm. He's in a realm called pure and holy, 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 separated from all of that. Can't, can't be tempted. He's beyond all of that. Uh, I'm really excited about that because one day I'm going to be beyond all that too. Because when I see him, I should be like him. Right now, right now, we are subject to being tempted. But praise God, Jesus showed us that we can succeed, didn't he? He did. He showed us. It. Somebody said, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire so you can stand against sin. No, you don't. It's wrong. You need to be born again and, and, and have a, a, a nature that belongs to the Holy Ghost so you can stand against temptation. Because Jesus, for 30 years, with the divine nature, showed us a person who stood against all temptation. 30 years, he didn't sin one single time. Not on any occasion, not in any dimension, not in any sort of kind of way. Ever. Ever. And there he condemned sin in the flesh, showing us what glory and power and authority the divine nature would produce in our life as we just simply lived out a life in obedience to God, walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Living in the Spirit. That's what the new birth looks like. And then one day Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire. And all of a sudden we see the transition of his whole life and now he's consumed with the harvest and reaching the lost and showing the power and the authority of God everywhere he goes. And his sermons were opening up the eyes of the blind and his sermons were opening up the ears of those deaf and, and delivering people from the torments of devils. Oh, by the help and the grace of God, I'll never walk past a person who's sick and not have the authority to raise them up. In the name of Jesus, I'll never walk by a person who's tormented and afflicted and tossed and not give to them the authority, yeah. the, 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 the product of the authority that God has given and placed within my life. Amen. Even tonight, let there come a decision in our life. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much given there, but I mean, I, it is a devastating thing to me to find myself even one time as I did in the airport, walk by somebody because I'm too busy. The fire of God, the love of God will compel us and constrain us. You know, Jesus went home. Jesus was found in the temple doing his, you know, being about the, doing the Father's will, being, you know, being about his father's business, as he said to his mom. And then the scripture says he went home and was subjected to his parents. And, and what we know is though he lived a model, perfect, glorious life uh, before everybody, he really didn't let, the, you know, let too many people know too much about him. We know that. He lived in every realm to where the, the people of Nazareth in his own hometown knew that that guy was a righteous and an upright man. They knew that. But one day after being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, he came and said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. They knew he was a righteous man, but he now takes it to a whole other level and begins to display the power and the glory of God by the, by the Holy Ghost. A message to set the captives free. I mean, you just think about it, people. Are you allowing God the Holy Ghost to be able to have freedom to move in your heart? To put within you, put within you a desire to, to make heaven for your family. Are you putting a desire within your heart to make your house a sanctuary? To, to putting a, a, a passion within your life that your family is a model of uprightness and purity because you've got enough of power and authority to lay hold on God. Huh? To see your people, to see your family walk upright and be filled with the Holy Ghost and walk in the things of the Spirit. Oh. And then it goes out from there. I mean, that's just beautiful in itself. To, be, to have such a passion and a fire in your spirit that when you get to church, it's the most exciting moment of your entire week. And you just got, you've got pent up praise that is about to bust out and hurt people's ears around you. Yes. Huh? Because yes. you haven't been in the house of God for two days. <laughs> it's true. Yes. It's true. True. What happens is people spend all of that, all of that praise. They spend all of that power and all that authority and all that glory and all that divine expression that otherwise would be there. They spit it on things that belong to a demonic realm and at best to a self-centered, selfish realm. They give themselves over to murmuring and complaint, complaining and strife divisions and all and that's just that's seemingly the least of the matters and concerns and then it gets worse from there you need to make up your mind that you're not communing with devils on the on your television anymore you need to make up your mind you're not communing with devils allowing your mind to be saturated with the thoughts of hell from your radio anymore you make it day of your mind that you're going to get separated to God and you'll learn how to think like God and learn how to be tender and sensitive towards the Holy Ghost so you can hear His voice. You're never going to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost when you're constantly grieving Him. You're never going to learn how to move with God the Holy Ghost when you're constantly violating His temple and desecrating His holy place, which is your heart and your life. It's true. People, I, I believe tonight with all of my heart that there are willing people in this place. There's been willing people, but I don't, I, you know, there's, there's been a little bit of a problem on the obedient side. There needs to be a willing and an obedient people because as soon as they are, then you're going to begin to eat the good of the land. The good of the inheritance, the good of the, the good of the airship, the good of the authority, the good of the power, the good of the glory, the good of the benefits, the good of the of the of the position and the influence that God would give to us. Amen. Now, I told some people the other day, I said, You just listen to me right now. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started of moving in faith and taking possession of the things that belong to the kingdom of God. I'm just getting started at preaching. I'm just getting started at reaching the lost. I'm just getting started at going after nations. Amen. That's what God does to people who set their heart upon the things of the Lord. Amen. You're not willing to sit by and just watch it all go down while you have a Bible study. And act like the job is for somebody else to do. You kick up and say you step up 
and you say, wait a minute, I'm going to enter into the realms of faith that subdues nations. I'm going to enter into the realms of faith that lays hold upon divine promises. I'm going to lay hold of the realms of faith that shuts down that which Satan is doing in the midst of Hollywood through MGM and the movie productions and the radio stations and all the other uh, forms of, of, uh, and venues that are so influential and so effective and, it's the, and, and, and the people that have control of it are demonized. Not altogether giants for the powers of darkness while we sit around and want somebody to sing us a lullaby. It's time that somebody starts moving besides one or two people. It's time that somebody gets passionate about this and gets into the program. It says, I'm here to reveal the life of Jesus. The vine's not going to be seen unless I'm willing to be the branch. And I don't want to just be any kind of branch. I want to be the branch that Jesus Christ described, bringing forth the fruit that God demands. God demands these things of our life. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. 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 It's about time when you plan on going to the fairground or you plan on going to Disneyland, you're not planning on checking out of the kingdom of God. The whole purpose of going there bigger than anything else is to be led by God, have divine appointments, because I'm telling you, if there's any place that the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits and the working and the activity of the gifts of God come alive, it's in those kind of places. And if you're not willing to do it there, you ain't going to have it anywhere. You're ashamed of him and of his name and of his glory and of his power and of his heaven and of his kingdom. He says, I'm ashamed of you. And he should, he has a right to be, and he should be. Because we would be just proven. We would be proven to be hypocrites. We'd be proven to be those people who are not committed to him, that love him in word and our hearts far from him. Huh? That's where Israel was. We can go and read the Old Testament. I love reading the Old Testament. It's sad. Much of it is so sad. But I love re reading it because I recognize how easy we border on that same kind of destruction. How we border continually in our behavior on those same kinds of decisions and actions. It allows the light of God to shine into our life and say, are you, say to us, are you doing this? Are you allowing this? Are you even in jeopardy or even a possibility of doing this or allowing this? By the help and the grace of God, nobody gonna come into this meeting, sit in here and wonder what I'm saying. Everybody's going to come into this church and they're going to be confronted. And you might be all upset you're, because what happened is you brought some visitor in here and, all they, and they heard you cannot live in your sin and, and, and be right with God. They're going, to get, they're going to get confronted with the demons that are going on in them, the, the iniquity that's working in their life. And you should be excited about that. Instead of all sad, said he came down too hard. Blame it on God, don't blame it on me. Your, your complaint is with God, not me. Amen. Don't you start saying God's kind of weird, and flaky, and freaked out, and crazy. Because he's not. It's the most glorious and honorable and majestic thing there is. Quit being contaminated with the thoughts of demon spirits. Start listening to the Holy Ghost. Come on, people. Quit making lies, valid arguments. Come on. In Jesus' name. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad, the sheep having no shepherd. God's looking at humanity. God's, you know, for me, Christ Jesus is looking beyond just the condition and the people of Israel. And he's looking at the nations of the earth. And today... He should be allowed to see through our eyes and act through our lives. Because the very next thing he says in this context, and he says that in the context of having an authority to be able to heal them, to cure them, to meet their needs so that they're not scattered anymore, to gather them, to bring to them a refreshing so they're not faint anymore, to bring to them liberty so they're not in prison anymore, to bring to them light and understanding and revelation so they're not blinded anymore. He says this. 
He says to his disciples, look. As he's healing them, as he's delivering them, look. Look how plenteous the harvest is. There's no possibility for you to sit in the presence of the living God and not hear him say, who will go for me? There's no possibility that you're going to ever truly receive the fire of the Holy Ghost in your life until you hear him say that and you're ready to go. I'm telling you, 120 made it out of 500. 500 select people, 120 made it because there was only 120 that was really able to hear and understand who will go for us and have responded and say, we'll go, all we want is the kingdom. People want to just have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire so they can have a little bless me club and act like they're spiritual or something. Who cares? It's about time you and I start walking in the authority of the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be willing to stand by and let you, I'll be patient and long-suffering, but I'm not going to be willing to stand by and watch you to continue to live the life you've been living and watch you run ruin because you're now closer to death than you were when I first met you. Your life is about over. Sitting around cogitating, trying to dream up what you're going to do. Get busy. Get busy. Somebody said, I don't know what to do. I said, try to imagine what to do. Get on your face and begin to cry out to God and let him break you and let him begin to melt you and let him begin to mold you and let him begin to shape you and let him begin to fill your heart with a passion to do what the word of God says to do. Start getting earnest about God. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't take God long to respond and begin to fill you with a greater desire, a greater hunger, a greater thirsting to ultimately fulfill those things that he said in his word and it, uh, and it won't be... Too, too long in that atm atmosphere and that kind of response to God. And you'll hear him say, who will go for us? You'll hear the call of God on your life. When you hear the call of God on your life, I'm telling you right now, you're a fit candidate now to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, to be endued with power from on high, that you might be able to be his witnesses to go to the harvest. For the harvest is plenteous. But the laborers are few. And so Jesus' cure for this, Jesus' remedy for this is pray ye therefore. I'm in the authority of prayer people. God has given to us an ability through this wonderful activity of submission to the Holy Ghost that now speaks out of our mouth the will and the heart of the Father to stand in a position on earth as though we're the ones who are making the decision of where the earth is going to go. It's as though we're the ones that are making the decision of what people are going to do and what people are going to believe. He's actually given to us, as, a, as it were, that place of, of intercession and authority. And he says, pray and ask the Father. And say, Father, this is what we want to see happen in the earth. This is what we want to see happen with the lost. This is what we want to see happen with our family. This is what we want to see happen in the midst of your church. Yes. Yes. As we begin to pray. Begin to ask the Father, the Lord of harvest, something's going to begin to happen to you. Something's going to happen to you. Something's going to begin to happen to you. You're not going to see people different anymore. You're not going to be intimidated and wonder whether or not they're going to be your friend. It ain't going to be about whether or not they like you or think you're cool. Huh? Or impressed with you at the meeting. Suddenly, you're going to be, things are going to be much bigger than that, much more real than that. You're going to be overwhelmed with compassion for the state of their soul. You'll be well overwhelmed with compassion. The compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. To see them set free, not willing to let them live in darkness and blindness of heart, spirit anymore. In that place, God's got himself a vessel from which he can pour out his glory. People, I'm going to lay hold. I'm going to lay hold. I'm going to lay hold on the things of heaven. I'm going to lay hold on these exploits of God. I'm going to lay hold on those things that Jesus described when he talked about these works and greater works. I'm going to lay hold on the exploits of God. I'm not going to sit around and allow things to remain as they are. I understand. I've read Jonathan Edwards' uh, uh, you know, sermon. I almost said speech because it's almost like it. Written out sermon and speech. Hands, sinners in the hands of an angry God. And when you read it, 
you know, it's not that powerful, it's not that impactful, but what it does is it shows you what takes place when a man will allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come upon him, and all of a sudden it breaks open some, di di some dimension that otherwise would hinder people, and it would just be nothing more than ordinary words as we would read it now. But when he spoke it, the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost was there, and the movings of God were taking place. Everybody shook under the power of God, held on to whatever they could find because they thought that the ground beneath them was opening up because of the revelation of the presence and the power of God. You're not going to have that sitting around yawning, waiting for another day. You're not going to have that sitting around being passionate about your stuff. Your car, your house, your clothes, your things, your position, your, what people think about you. Your hearts turn from earthly things to that which is heavenly. Now you're not about you, you're about Him. You're not about your will, you're about His will. You're not about your passions and your pursuits. You're about what Christ Jesus died at Calvary's for, cross for. Suddenly you're compelled, 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 compelled by the love of God. Compelled. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate. See, in this realm, then all of a sudden, I'm not just, you know, hearing some information, hearing some ideas and some concepts. I'm suddenly, I've suddenly grabbed a hold of the very heartbeat and passion of God. And, and then it becomes, as it were, my heartbeat and my passion. And out of that, I'm not willing to stand by and let things be as they are. I press it. I press it. I run after it. I'm in hot pursuit of these things. I give myself on every front, not just one, on every front. On the prayer front, on the praise front, on the preaching front, on the evangelism front, every front. On the home front, on the mission front, on every front. God's commanded you and I to keep the fire burning. To have a ease lit a fire within our lives. And he's commanded us as his priests to keep the fire burning. He's commanded us as his kings to make decisions for how things are going to go down in the world in which we now have been given responsibility and authority in. Yeah. Change has got to come, people. Yeah. Yeah. And that change has got to be realized, most importantly, within the context of the way you fellowship with him. Who cares what your, what your condition is? Father has empowered you to have his remedy and have his cure. Amen. Not sitting around waiting for a more convenient day, a more convenient time. It's not going to come. Somebody's got to prophesy. Somebody's got to stand up and get real with God and begin to believe the authority that he's given and not allow anything, whether it's physical issues in your body, whether it's financial issues in the, in, in the realms of, of that which you have, Supposedly, it's a lie that you supposedly now are limited to as to what you can and cannot do. It's a lie. It's Master Mammon. It's Master Mammon running you and bow to him, offer incense into his name. Master Mammon and your little calculator, your little spreadsheet, and your little dedication to making sure that everybody likes you in the realm of men, upholding any promises you make to them. Meanwhile, God, you just have to wait for whatever I can throw you later. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It needs to get turned around, people. Yeah. You need to get rid of your spreadsheet. Yeah. And God ain't going to ever show up in your spreadsheet. No. <laughs> huh? You need to get rid of your map. Because he's not taking your route. Amen. How are you listening to me? Yeah. You need to get rid of your attitude and your mindset because he's not listening to your counsel. Yeah. That's step number one. That's step number one. Then you can begin to hear his, his faith. You can begin to hear the moving of his spirit. You can begin to hear his instruction. Ha <laughs> ha. You begin now to make decisions because God, the Holy Ghost, put it in your spirit to do. And you rise up and you go do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you don't check in with Master Mammon because you killed him. Amen. You destroyed him. You took his head with the sword of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The word of God's a sword, sword of spirit. It's not for slicing bread, it's for taking head. It's not for cutting butter. Are you with me? Come on. I hope you can hear me. I pray that you can hear me. God, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, people. It's time for an army to start moving. It's time for an army. So, 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 you, so you say that you went out and you labored all day and you caught no fish. Labor another one. Labor another one. Labor another one. Labor another one. Until you get a breakthrough. Lest you run the, lest you run the possibility of standing before him and your life being weighed in the balance. And he shows you how much passion, how much time, how much persistence you put into the things that you were interested in and that you wanted. And then he compares that to the persistence and the passion and the interest that you put into the things that he wanted and be found wanting. It's time we begin to get real with God. It's time that we start listening to what he has to say and believing that the things which he's declared, he's also able to do them, that all heaven is mobilized to our aid. You think about Jesus praying and interceding on our behalf. Defining the value of his existence to pray for you and me. My goodness, as soon as we begin to respond, respond to his prayer and his intercession, as soon as our heart begins to take up those things that is in his heart to do, how, that inst how instantaneously God will mobilize everything that belongs to the realm of his divine glory to bring to pass that you do and go beyond, if you're a woman, the things that Mariah Woodworth Etter did and the things that Catherine Coleman did and the things that other women of God did. That you go beyond, if you're a man, the things that Wigglesworth did. The things that John G. Lake did or whoever you want to put there. Father, just waiting for you to cease living your own life and decide you're going to now rise up and begin to live his. God's Father's waiting to see you come into a place where every dimension of your life is submitted to the Holy Ghost instead of just, you gave God 20, if you really evaluated your life, 25% of your life is submitted to the Holy Ghost. 75% you're making the decision and calling the shots based upon how you feel at the time. Father gives a very clear description of what it looks like when our lives are submitted to him. He's in great detail described it. And if we begin to get earnest and real with God, we'll begin to search out the word and say, Father, I know that these things of being sent to the Holy Ghost and learning to move in the authority of the Spirit are here written out and they're revealed and that I can learn them. I can learn the rules and the laws of the spirit of life. I can learn and come to understand how to move in these things that you've made available. And then when we begin to get that ser serious and we begin to get that hungry, hungry, God will give us revelation. We'll be able to see this, what's, right, what's right there before us. And we'll, we'll begin to understand, oh, that's why I wasn't able to move with you. I was violating in that area. That's why I wasn't able to hear you because I wasn't responding to what those things that you were asking me to do. You show us. As long as we're willing to just let things be as they are and blame it on somebody else. Think about how much nicer it'd be if I was in another church, in another state, in another city, in another town, in another nation. Always just nothing but distractions, more lies. Keeping God's people from ever dealing with the reality of the problems that exist within your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and how he feels about this sanctified, set-apart, sacred tabernacle that he calls the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is your body. The importance to him about the thoughts and the ideas and the expressions and the thinking that we allow going on in our mind and how that he focused his divine power and gifted us and equipped us with his divine power to be able to effectively deal with those things that would come against our thoughts and our minds and our thinking that would somehow violate the knowledge of God. And, and, and we're so clueless, we're so clueless about it that we, sit, we don't only not utilize the power, but we go ahead and open up, as it were, a window and a floodgate of demonic imaginations and demonic thoughts and lies to flood us. And some people sit and get saturated by it with hours, for hours, day in, day out, hours of communing with devils. 
in so many different areas of our life. And we wonder why the churches of the United States of America are in the condition that they're in. And the people's lives are so barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord. A clean break has got to come. I mean, when you just begin to shut down things, first and foremost, that are floodgates and gateways of the enemy to uh, overwhelm you and f overwhelm your soul and pollute your mind and understanding, then you're going to learn how to take a hold of the knowledge of God. You're going to understand how to move in the power of God to effectively deal with things in the realms of unbelief, to effectively deal with things in the realms of doubt, to the things to effectively deal with things in the compassions and the reasoning of men, to effectively deal with things in the realms of that which man would think and do and, 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 and respond and behave. Because the power of God has given to us the insight and the knowledge of Jesus Christ of how he does it. Hmm? I think there's no better way to understand how to make sure that you're not conflicted. For example, I was ministering this in the School of Spirit last week to make sure that you're not somehow compromised by being caught away in human sympathy, which people love to give. They practice it all the time. It's totally demonic. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. He talks so harshly to you. Are you okay? You demon from hell. You understand me? Causing someone to be snared with the power of the devil, ministering to rebellion. Demon from hell. Talk about casting a stumbling block before your brother. You should have committed suicide before you did that. You should have obeyed Jesus and tied a millstone around your neck. Got out on this in the Pacific, but rode out, tied a millstone around your neck, thrown the millstone off, and you have to follow thereafter. Before you gave such counsel, gave such expression. The people are so attached to that realm. It's a human realm. It's a demonic realm. But I love the ex expression of, of what Wigglesworth did when he's ministering to a man who's frail and weak and his stomach was eaten up with cancer. And where your stomach is eaten up with cancer, there's a lot of nerves there, there's a lot of pain there, you can imagine. The doctor's standing there trying to express to him how fragile, how weak he is, how eaten up with cancer is, how he's on the verge uh, of de death, how we've got to be very careful with him. And so what Wigglesworth did to make sure that he didn't get attached to any human and earthly concern, he drew back and punched him in the stomach. <laughs> and unless you understand what I'm saying, that, didn't make, that doesn't make any sense. He broke free of all earthly attachment and those things that would convolute the faith and the authority and the knowing of God and make him purely earthly by imprisoning him in human sympathy. Yeah. And human compassion. And while the doctor's standing there screaming, you killed him, you killed him, you killed him. He's praying for the next person. While he's praying for the next person, the guy who was sick and on his deathbeds up, walking around praising Jesus in his little gown, his little hospital gown. Because somebody knows how to walk in the Spirit. Somebody's learned how to move with the Holy Ghost. Somebody got up every morning and danced around and praised God and learned how to live by the communion of the blood and of the bread and of the body. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. People, tonight I want to have communion with you before we end the meeting. I want you to begin to understand a little bit more about how to live out this life and understand it. Father's given us an example of communion where we live by the blood, where we, every day we get to eat the manna from heaven. We live by the blood of Jesus Christ and we eat as it were his body. We live by him, we exist by him. He's always there with his mercy and with his grace and with his intercession and with his help and with his comfort and with his dedication to perfect everything that concerns us. He who began a good work in us is willing to complete it. Complete it. And we're going to have to stop living in shame and confusion and, and condemnation and guilt and being run down, being overwhelmed, being sad, being sorry. <laughs> 
and start being thankful and blessed that he's there with his keeping power to keep us. He's there to uphold us and build us up that there's nothing that he said that we cannot do. That we've, He's there always with his empowerment to get us to that place that he's called us to do. And his blood and his body is a means by which we find great boldness and confidence that no matter what goes on, we pursue with all that is within us that which he has purposed for us to do. We pursue all, all that is in us, that heavenly vision. That you stop living and interacting with God based upon how you feel about yourself. And you start living and interacting with God based upon how he feels about you. Stop living your own life, in other words, and start living his life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People walk around overwhelmed with their own human failure. Over, overwhelmed even worse with their own human ability. God's got more hope to do something with somebody who's in human failure than somebody who's all captivated with their human ability. Somebody always knows themselves something. And never know what God knows until you empty, until you don't know anything, and now all of a sudden you can hear. Hallelujah. Until you don't have any ability, now He can come strengthen you. Hallelujah. Pastor Kuribara Bahasilia Pra. Halamam Rabakaya. Let us see Talalamambato, the Sitalamahakila. Hallelujah. I mean, I want you to learn how to just take a swan dive into the blood of Jesus Christ and float around all day long. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sip it. Ha ha. Kita walakaya. Ha. Communion. Hallelujah. I'm walking in the light as he's in the light and his blood continually cleanses me from all sin. Somebody said, you mean I can't live my own life? No, you can't. Jesus said, you lose your life and you can have my life. You hang on to your life and you cannot have my life because his life means eternal life. His life is eternal life. You can't have it living your own. God wants to show us. And there's really no way for God to talk to us unless we find ourselves in that place that only the blood of Jesus Christ can bring us to. God can't speak to us and move in our lives and give us boldness unless we're willing to be in that disposition and that place that only eating the heavenly manna, the food from heaven, can bring us to that place to, to, to respond to him in. Otherwise, you're always second-guessing yourself, always wondering whether or not God loves you. How far away is he? How close is he today? I feel God real close to me today. I'm out in the woods. You're redeemed by the woods, huh? Your woods, your intercessor. Oh, I got to go up to the mountain top to pray, then I feel closer to God. Well, the mountain's your redeemer. All these things that people just say, they tell on themselves all the time. I really feel like I'm out in the woods. I really feel close to God. You are an idiot. And we want to bring you out of that darkness of mind and help you understand that that's wrong thinking. Amen. You know, sometimes people say, I oh, don't tell them, just, just leave them. No. <laughs> I'm not going to just leave them. Amen. Just leave them. They just hate you for telling them. Well, let them hate me, but I'm going to tell them. Amen. I'm, I'm going to let them know. That is absolutely wrong thinking. And you need to repent right now for giving the woods the credit. <laughs> Because we brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm not standing around and let somebody violate the things of the, of the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're brought near by the Holy Ghost. We have access by the blood. We have access by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I've failed so many times to deliver the whole counsel of God. I'm done with that. I'm not failing no more. Too many times... I've not been willing to move in the faith and the authority that God has given me. I'm not doing that no more. Too many times I've been willing to not lift up my voice and shout and praise when it, when it, when it needed to be done. I'm not doing that anymore. Hallelujah. Too many times I've been willing, not too many, but too many times I've been willing to be influenced by the disposition of other people, but not anymore. Amen. By his open grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It all really begins, people. It really all begins in understanding the authority that God has given, the power and the glory that God has given. And then in that context, recognizing, wait a minute, look at all of these unreached people. Look at all these people in such destitute of such a destitute place spiritually without God. So many people afflicted and tormented and wrecked with pain and sin. 
then there you begin to cry out to God, oh, use me. And maybe you don't really even, well, no, you do. I was going to say maybe you really don't even un need to understand how much authority that has been given to us to be able to really grab a hold of these things. Maybe you really, all you really needed to do was to begin to see the condition of humanity and begin to have the Ho Holy Ghost compassion and Holy Ghost love for them and the response that Father has for them. But you know, in that place of crying out to God, you wouldn't be able to cry out properly in faith because you would be in expectation for Him to come and do it instead of for Him to send you to do it through you. Do you understand me? Yes. You say, Father, raise up laborers. You know, you're not going to be in His presence too long like Isaiah. You're not going to be standing there too long. Behold the Lord. Wouldn't it be beautiful tonight to go to bed? Just so desperate for God. You've run yourself ragged, worn out, pursuing the things of the kingdom of God. Wore yourself out, tired, haven't been able to sleep for the past five nights. <laughs> Obeying the voice of the Lord, doing what he's called you to do. You lay down in your bed so exhausted that you're snoring before your eyes are closed. You're waking yourself up before you fall falling asleep. Kind of thing. That's how tired you are. And suddenly, you hear the Lord. You begin to see His glory. His train fills the temple. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. And then in that encounter with God, you're overwhelmed by His purity and His holiness. It, it, it is redefined the whole thing for you. And you begin to be concerned a moment about yourself. But he immediately says, though, look and behold the blood that has brought you here. Uh, and you're not gonna, it's not going to be long and you're going to hear him say, who will go for us? Amen. Who will go for us? Could, has Father heard you say, has he heard you cry out for the harvest? Has he heard your voice come up before the throne room? of your desperate desire and hunger to be used by Him to do the will of the Father. Because I'm telling you, you don't want your voice to be absent there. Yeah. You don't want your voice to be absent there. Amen. The strength of your voice in the realms of heaven is the sincerity of your heart. The volume of your voice, how loud it comes through, is the depth of the need inside. And God the Holy Ghost alone puts within us and that's something he does in response to our willingness to hear him and respond to him. That's why it's so important for you to say amen. amen. That's why it's so important for you to say yes, Lord, thank you. So why it's so important for you to get excited at the proclamation of God's goodness for you. Amen. Oh, my God, Brasita. I hope you get it and that you've got enough ability to remember something. So you can remember math. whoopie doo So you can remember your history lesson. Big deal. Can't you remember to praise God? Yes. Can't you remember to walk with Him? Yes. Must you be told time and time again, now here's the place that you should be excited and thrilled because He's telling you that He's your Savior and that He loves you and that He's your healer and that He's here tonight to fill you. I mean, you know, come on. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it because a lot of it has really nothing to do with memory. It has to do with the state of your spirit of whether you're living under fear and intimidation and guilt and condemnation and either some form of, of fear like discouragement or anxiety or depression, <laughs> sorrow. It's about time God's people clean escape those things that Satan would try to compromise your life with. Amen. Start getting yourself in a place and position where if you need a little bit of extra help from heaven, all you do is say, oh, Father of God, Lord, behold the threatenings. Stretch forth your hand by your holy child, Jesus, and grant that there should be signs and wonders. And that's about all the prayer it needs to be. Take you about 30 seconds to get the place shaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your voice begins to be heard on high through prayer and intercession. You listen to me. Your, prayer, your voice begins to be heard and begins to be developed in the spirit through praise and thanksgiving. Then all of a sudden you go places and people are shaken because they hear the sound of the voice of God in your voice. They fall out under the power of God. Hallelujah. Because they hear the sound of heaven in your voice. They paralyzed on the floor. 
Hey. Paralyzed. Knocked down. You didn't even get near him. Paralyzed because they never heard the sound of heaven coming out of men's voice like that. Paralyzed. Because your passions are overwhelmed and overrun with the will of the Father and the passions of heaven. It's true. These things, these things of his glory, these things of his river, these things of divine expression, he has for every single person. You're going to decide whether you want the lust of the flesh or you want God. You're going to decide whether you want the things of the spirit or whether you want the realms of the demonic. You have to decide whether you want heaven or whether you want leaven. Huh? Yeah. Come on, people. Yeah. You have to decide. Yeah. There's nothing hidden from the Lord here tonight. Yeah. Father sees it all. Yeah. He lays it right out before us. And the, act, the reaction that he expects from our heart is not to run and hide and hope that nobody else knows. To repent. It's not hard for me to understand where a sincere heart before God, when they sin or trespass against God, they want someone to hear their confession. It's not hard for me to understand that. To know that God has heard the confession. You with me? In the table of the Lord table of the Lord. You can't come to the table of the Lord and drink the blood and eat the flesh when you're not willing to let God hear your confession, when you're willing to be set on sin and iniquity, to go ahead and be involved with the pollution of the spirit and the body. I wouldn't do that if I were you. What I would do is I would just confess my sins. I would confess my sins on the level that I, do, I want rid of it. I never want to be contaminated by it ever again. I never want it near me or on me ever again. You listen to me, the knowledge of the Lord is here. It is a beautiful thing to walk in the discerning of spirits. It's a wonderful thing to walk in purity because everything is crystal clear. Nothing's hidden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not all con conflicted with all the lies of the enemy covering up the things and making your ability to see and understand compromise, but you can see and understand clearly because you're over here in the realm of heaven. Amen. Amen. Tonight, just understand we get to live with this precious blood of Jesus there cleansing us. That if we sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us un for, uh, from all unrighteousness if we'll confess them. Huh? That he gave his blood as a propitiation for our sins and not for our only, ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wow. 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 That will bring you to a place where you never want to sin. Amen. That doesn't bring you to a place where you say, oh, good, you know, no problem. I can live more or less like the devil all day long and be happy. It ain't about living like the devil. It's understanding that that realm is death and destruction. And Christ Jesus opened up the door so we could have life. And have it more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't God so good? He loves his people. He loves his children. It's just that sometimes, someplace, somebody's going to have to st stand up. And grow up. Amen. Start moving with God. Yes. It's time that people understand that God has empowered us to walk in a greater anointing than Elijah had. In a greater manifestation of his glory. With a greater ability to please him than Enoch had. Think about it. You have that right now. Enoch did not have the divine nature. And yet he pleased God. You and I can please him far beyond that. We can behold him in a way that goes beyond what Moses was able to see. Oh, Father. Oh, God. We plead with you tonight. In Jesus' name, we plead with you. Kay, why don't you and, and Brittany take care? And Jacqueline. 
pull stuff out over there. Set the table. You were just great with child, baby. I thought it was let G Ruthie Ann said, Well, how about me? My husband's going over there. I need to be over there too. Get over there, baby. I didn't speak your sweet out. You're so great with child. You look like you barely can move. <laughs> she's, a radical, she's a radical Holy Ghost woman, whether she is or not. People look around you, see the things that God is doing in this place, and ask yourself, is it, does it have your full attention? Does it have all of your passion? Look around and see what we're doing in terms of Camp Shake Nations and how we want to expand it. Look at what we're doing in terms of, of, of the missions right now and the opportunities in the nations that we have right now and the things that we're doing in preparation for that out on, in, in our Mission Trainer Center, out on the ranch. And the things that we're doing with that as we go to nations, think about what's actually the opportunities you have right here. Just being involved in passion, in praise, in prayer, and rejoicing and thanksgiving over so many effectual doors opened unto us. Amen. Begin to lay your hand to the things that you have available to, to put your hand to right now. Begin to let faith be directed in your heart to say, I can do more. I want to be able to do more financially. I want to be able to do more spiritually. I want to be able to do more physically. And quit dreaming or fantasizing, rather, and start doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I really want to help. Yeah, you do. I can see that. In your dreams. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, I, I know that many of you, and that most of you, you just, you, you've got your hand to plow, but you can do a whole lot more. Don't sit there and tell me how much you've been doing. Give me a break. You need to catch up. Yeah. We're tired of walking around waiting on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We out here to run. Yeah. Not to baby step up the, up the road. Yeah. Hey, with me. If you've got to exercise like that, you need to belong with another group. We're running out here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, people. Yeah. We're running. Amen. We're not out for no stroll. The, you know, in this ministry, we've been running wide open since the beginning. People used to say, how, how are you able to do that? How are you able to do what you do with Sunriders? How are you able to do this thing, do that thing, do the other thing? I mean, you're just a little small church. Because you know what? God doesn't, it isn't about being a small church. It's about somebody got some passion. Yes. Yes. It's about somebody just fully on focus, man, I'm running with this thing. Come on, people, you've had this... Look, I've been modeling this for you to, to you for a long time. Give me a break. I'm not sitting on the, I'm not sitting on the sidelines saying, run, go. <laughs> I pray God give you the strength of 13 oxen. <laughs> do this, do that. I, come on, people. We've been doing, we've been modeling this thing for you. Give me a break. Get up. Yes. Sit around and tell me about what you're doing. Yes. I want to see what, you know, what, what's going on in the kingdom. How are you participating with what God's given us to do in the kingdom? Yes. Amen. I hear about what you're doing offline. Don't count. It's, it, it's, it's, it's parachurch ministry. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It's peripheral to the call of God upon your life and the will and purpose of God for your life. Right here is manifest the will and purpose of God, of God for your life. What are you doing? You better listen to me. You better listen to me. Because you'll miss out on your divine opportunities if you don't. Well, I've been busy over here with the other people over there doing that other thing. <laughs> That's just not smart. <laughs> that's not what God gave you to do if you, get, if you get in that place where you're moving with God you're going to understand the fruitfulness that he has for you when you're willing and obedient you're going to eat the good of the land you're going to see increase in your life as you press it more as you give more you give more of your life <laughs> my dear wife she got up the other morning she goes with, she did with, she did Anna's thing, you know. All done. You know, because I'm like, what is the one phrase that she has heard for 31 years? What do you reckon that phrase is? No. Hurry up, it's time to go. <laughs> Every day, hey, hurry up, it's time to go. She's like, all done. I said, okay, fine, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, you don't have one second, you've got 10 seconds. 
No, I didn't. I said, you have two minutes. <laughs> That's what we feel like, though, right? All done. We're worn slap out. Tired. Honey. Honey. Human frame. The explosion of the Holy Ghost is far bigger than the human frame can contain. But God's people are going to have to stop letting the few do the work of the many. Yeah. Yes. It's true. Yeah. See, well, what can I do? They're kidding. <laughs> They're kidding. You know, it's like standing in the garden with Grandma, right? And there's weeds everywhere. There's 101 <laughs> things to do, and you're standing going, what do I do? You know, because you haven't got the ability to see. You don't have the eyes to see. You don't want to see. You don't want to see the weeds. <laughs> Those look like plants to me. <laughs> Those are weeds? <laughs> All of them? <laughs> that really does prevent your ability to see. And it's a bit overwhelming, isn't it? What Father wants you to do is to be able to look on the harvest and look at the opportunity and then begin to take it to your knees and say, Father, I want to be able to move in faith. I can see the financial need. Father, I can see the resource need. Oh, the things that we could do. We're, the, the kingdom is human resource limited people. And that's really it's always been. And when God's people are willing to step up and say, Father, everything that I have, all that I have right now, I put it in your hands so fully that you may multiply it. Oh, my, my, my. Because otherwise we got well-wishers. Oh, you know, I really want to be there. I really want to help. I'm really there. And nothing ever happens. Get up, man, and run wide open with what you have in your hand. Don't sit there and I would like to and I wish I could and we should have and I can't believe I've been so slow. Who wants to hear it, man? Who wants to hear? You're hearing, you just, what? Do something. Get moving. Surprise us. You know what I mean? Show up for work. In other words, yeah, hallelujah. Surprise us. Grab a hold of a passion in God and say, wait a minute, there could be more fire in the prayer. I want more fire in the prayer. I, in other words, I want more authority. It doesn't have to be louder. I mean... It doesn't need to be louder. It needs to have more authority. God will give it to you as soon as you see that, man, if I could just begin to step up, Father, with a greater authority in prayer, I know I can really begin to participate and move this thing forward. And I want that authority. Oh, God, show me. Holy Ghost, give me the insight. Give me the wisdom. Give me the yieldedness. And when you begin to really want something like that with God, guess what? You're going to get it. Amen. So long as you're just like, I don't know what to do. If he just gives some announcements every once in a while, we might know what to do. We don't even know what's hardly going on around here ever. We usually hear about it after it's done. You know what? You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I know some of you actually thought that. If you didn't say it. That's the you're in grandma's garden. Because Father set before you, he wants to give you a vista view. The Holy Ghost personally wants to show you. Amen. Yeah. And say, look at all your opportunities right over here. I want to move in faith to your life. I want to move with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost to your life. I want to give you divine insight. I want to show you things that nobody else even knows. You can go tell pastor, look, I, I heard it from heaven. We're actually supposed to be in Oklahoma. No one's going to believe you. I heard it from heaven. All we need to do is just move right here and Father's going to give us Cuba. Then we're interested. Because now you're telling us about something God showed you concerning that which God has given us to do. Hallelujah. 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 We're fighting a battle for Cuba right now. The battle is raging. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to meet Ra Raul. I'm, it's a battle that's raging. It's a battle that's fought in prayer. It's a battle that's fought because people know how to arise to faith, who know how to set their heart on the kingdom of God. You're trained here. You're trained. You're trained. There's no place for lazy people. There's no place for procrastinators. There's no place for people who can't get around to it. Hallelujah. You start doing everything that you do, you do it diligently. You do it with great vigilance. You do it with great consistency. You are ahead of the curve. Huh. You meet your timelines. Hallelujah. Especially in the kingdom of God. 
And all of a sudden, you're not just off wondering, well, what are, we, what is, what are they doing now? What, what is it, what is, where are they at with, with the program? And then, and then you know, later, later on, you're like, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just never really have a compassion for the lost. I just really never have a, a passion about prayer. It's because you're not a part of what God's doing. you over elsewhere, doing your own thing, not participating with what God has placed before you. Just, it's real simple, people. It's not difficult. It's a wonderful thing to be a part of a company of people and be able to move with them. Yeah. It's wonderful to be God's company, yeah. God's people, yeah. the people of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Now, you know, what we were doing was having picnics once a month and, uh, you know, having a parking lot potluck every second week. Huh? And having a retreat every quarter. I would be willing to understand your concerns and detachments. But that's not what we're doing. We're doing Nepal. We're doing Kashmir. We're doing Cuba. With a passion for, you know, Azerbaijan and Armenia. We're, and, 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 and. The United States of America, the situation that we're in, and the opportunities for somebody to start getting a vision to go out and touch the kids that are out in the various different places and 112 different unique towns in San Diego County with 112 different zip codes. Well, you're so busy doing whatever it is you're doing, you don't have time for them. Don't give me another Bible study. I don't need another. Don't go to another Bible study. Come to this meeting. Go get a van and pick people up and bring them to church. Go to another evangelistic outreach. Go to minister to people on the sidewalk. Go reach some lost kids. Yeah. Go take whatever you, is you have and influence you have and ability and strength you have and go touch somebody's life. Yeah. Amen. 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 If you can't think of anything else, go mop their floor. Amen. I mean, I hope you can come up with something better than that. <laughs> And there's a little bit more of anointing than then just having to rely upon the human ability to mop the floor that you can actually go and give them so they can come knock on their house and say, listen, we hear with the authority of God, come pray for anybody sick in the house. Yeah. You can have a Bible study as long as you're going and gathering people. Huh? Hallelujah. You guys are going and gathering people. Hey, come on, run with it. Yeah. You can have a, you can have a, a meeting so long as you're doing what you're doing you're going and gathering people run with it run with it don't you let up don't you supercharge it huh God's looking for some people to go out and compel folks to come now you told me you was coming last week why weren't you here say I blow English I mean uh, yeah, well, what? <laughs> How do you get out of the highways and the byways and you compel people to go? You know, it's really, when you think about it, when you think about it, think about it. Jesus set a banquet. It's, it's where Carlos got it from. Jesus set a banquet. And he invited all the prestigious folks, all the people, you know, that were close and nearby and the guests of, you know, honor and whatnot, all the folks, you know, that had meaning and had value and, they wouldn't come, so he said, go out there and get the people that live on the street. And go get the people who are outcast and don't have anything to eat. And the, and the stranger and the folks that don't have anything else going on. And tell them to come on in, there's food to eat. That my house may be full. If you can't get the house full any other way, set a table. Are you listening to me? I'm looking for, God's looking for some people who know how to run with the program of the ministry and are all just looking for another excuse of why they don't have to go. Oh, I don't, I, 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 I uh, new yoke of oxen, got to prove them. Dad died, got to bury him. Just married a wife, need to take care of her. Just built a house, haven't lived in it. What's your excuse? Well, my husband thinks they were out too much already. Lay hands on them, cast the devil out of them. 
Uh, my wife thinks we're too busy and ready. Tell her she's just too, she's forsaken all covenant with God. You need some more answers. I can give you some biblical answers. Why you set your hand to the plow and didn't go anywhere with it. All you did is went out there and hooked the horses up and went in for tea. <laughs> they been out there. They been sitting out there all hitched up to that plow for years. People, this honestly, it's the fun life. It really is. It's the fun life being used by God. God's going to use people that are going to start right where they're at. He's not going to use people waiting for something to have special kind of conditions, you know, a sound system, certain lighting, smoke and mirrors, and, you know, a certain number of people. No. God's going to use people who are so excited that they were able to go out there and, you know, fix a meal and had three people show up, and they are faithful with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, love how, I love how my dear brother James, I don't know if James is still watching tonight, watching or even watch tonight. You may be. Love you so much if you are, James. You know, he's like, Lord, I want to be used by you. What, don't I, what don't even can I do? You know, James, you can just see James. You know. Walks over the refrigerator, looks in the refrigerator, and there's like a, you know, half a pork chop and a half a potato or whatever it was. And this is all he has. He doesn't have anything else. So he takes it, puts it in the microwave, puts it on a plate, walks out, finds the first bum, kicks the bum, says, here, I'm your new pastor. And all that God has used him to do in the nations of the earth. James, we're so thankful for you, man. You didn't have to have somebody preach at you for years before you would ever even have any kind of snail movement. Have they moved yet? I think I saw something move. I think, I think, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think I saw a little twitch. Like maybe they was, it's not a measurable movement forward, but I saw something move. That's kind of what you do with sloths, you know. You're like, did they move? I'm not sure. God says, don't be a sloth. In fact, he said, don't be a sloth with great disdain about sloth. And slothfulness. We've got a lot of assignments for you. You've got a lot of places to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go pick up a 5,000 square foot tent that a dear friend of mine gave to me. I'm expecting people to use it. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm expecting, we've got, we have, God's going to hold you in account. He's going to hold you in account. I don't know, some of you just, I don't know. Maybe some of you don't know all of you. Do you know you didn't count how many rooms in this place that you could have filled, that you could have had a meeting in? Not meetings where you're just bringing everybody out and telling them what I've already told them, but where you're going and gathering people and bringing them. I, want, I, I really wouldn't want to be in a situation where I was being held accountable. For having been given such resources from the Lord and didn't do anything with them. Because His grace would be bestowed upon me in vain. I want you to think about it. Start moving. You'll, just, you'll, be, you'll be amazed what God will do with you. Just start moving. Just start just saying, listen, Lord, here's what I got. What do I have? I got a bicycle. I can, I can, I can bring somebody on the, to the church on the handlebars. I could pick up one person on the end bars. I used to could pick up two people on my bike. <laughs> I could let one person sit on the seat, and I got one person on the end bars, and I could just stand and pedal. I'm sure some of the rest of you do this. And then one night I had this like bike, had a little fender on the back of it. I could do three people. I don't remember exactly how many total people I've ever gotten on my bicycle. But I'm telling you right now, it's been three at least. Now I have a car. Now you have a car. I want you to think about the. I want you to think about the harvest. I want to think. Of, I want you to think about what you're doing with the time that you have. The passion that you have. Is there not passion in your soul? 
Because when there's passion in your soul, no excuse will bar you. You'll bust the head of every excuse. You'll run through every troop of excuse. You'll leap over through over every wall of why you cannot. And there, faith will be developed within your life. There, a disposition of receptivity before God will be opened unto you because you're taking what you have within the framework of what you possess right now. Not waiting for God to do something later. What he's already done, and you're going with it wide open right here in this ministry. Because what you're doing outside this ministry doesn't count. It's wood, stubble, and hay. It's all burned up. Don't even count. You're wasting your time. God doesn't even approve it, period. Not when he's given so many things to do right here, so many glorious opportunities, and there aren't even laborers to take care of it. And you do something else with somebody else? Wood, stubble, and hay. Will of man, not the will of God. Provable over and again. Father gives you something to do here, and then you get all upset and get tired and get offended so quickly because you can't get along with people. Shame upon you. Praise God for the communion table. Praise God for his mercy. Praise God that he's long-suffering, not willing that any would perish. He's willing to work with us no matter how honorary we are. But if we stay with an honorary disposition, don't recognize, wait a minute, what I'm doing, my behavior is wrong and inappropriate. How are we ever going to be healed from it? You see what I'm saying? We've got to recognize, wait a minute, what I do was wrong, my actions was wrong, my attitudes were wrong. I was unfaithful. I started something, didn't finish it. And I've had people actually insinuate that I started something and hadn't finished it. They must be completely have left, taken leave of all their senses. Completely taken leave of all their senses. And certainly they were judging me after their own problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you don't know what I'm saying, hello, you're back in grandma's garden. <laughs> and I got three people shook their head and everybody else is going, Hello, people. Come on now. We're talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. We're not talking to people on the web right now. We're talking to you. Yeah. Maybe you just all st were stunned because it was just like, you know, you're guilty. I hope there wasn't that many people that are guilty of that. <laughs> I'm going to have to start reading, your, reading what your response is. If you're quiet, I'm going to say guilty. Because this is an interaction here. You're supposed to be the body of Christ, manifestation of the Spirit going on in everybody's life right now. Manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Everything you do is manifestation of the Holy Ghost. So I'm just reading what God's saying. Guilty? Not guilty? Excited? True? I'm in? I'm out? I'm with you? I'm not? I'm hearing you? I can't hear? Whatever. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father just wants, listen, Father just wants to develop explosive faith in your life. Amen. That's what this is all about. He just wants to create within you a great success in the kingdom so that you get to enjoy all that he's empowered us to do. That's what this is all about. I'm just t touching it real personal. Because it's not going to be something he does offline of your consecration, commitment, and faithfulness to him. You got to start doing, you got to start moving now. I promise you, dear people, I promise you, listen to me. The anointing that's in my life right now is something that began to be developed as I, as I was passionate about ministering to people one on one, as I was passionate, passionate about gathering people everywhere I went, as I was passionate about going on. The, the sidewalk, the street corner to reach people. And I never did it with an ulterior motive thinking one day I'm going to have this other thing and it's going to be greater and it's going to be bigger. No, it's just all about then doing it now. Here's what I've got. I want to be used to the Lord. Let Father give you a divine assignment tonight. Let it be within the context of this church and what we're doing. Huh? If you're going to go to a nation, go to a nation that we're doing something with. Don't come and tell me about Mars. Because I really have no vision for Mars. God hasn't, showed, God hasn't showed us to go to Mars. 
and you're in this church, and he's going to come to you, and, and now you're, he's going to go around the leadership and around all the multiplicity of things he's got to do. He's going to say, go to Mars. Go tell pastor you're going to go to Mars. Oh, uh, okay. You're going to Mars. Okay. Boy, you ran him down. Was it, was it a giant? Uh, they smelled the food, hey? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kate. That you just, just stand by as a spectator and say, look at that big thing running across the room. Oh, well, I don't know what to do. Because that happens way too many times. I understand God did not get the brightest and the best. I understand that. But the beautiful thing of it is, is we begin to cry out to God. The Holy Ghost comes and makes us brilliant. Yes. And causes us, everyone, to take up the responsibility for everything that we encounter. Yeah. Hello, people. I'm tired of talking yeah. to some of you. Amen. In the sense of, like, come on now. I'm going to get behind you and just start pushing you forward. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've talked to you long enough. Now I'm going to just get behind you and just lean on you. Are you with me? Yeah. It's not like I'm tired of talking to you and I don't want to do, you know, deal with you anymore. I'm going to deal with you physically. Yes. Am, am, are we making the points here tonight? Yes. Don't tell me about Romania. Don't tell me about, you know, right now, don't tell me about Los Angeles. Talk to me about Nepal. Amen. Talk to me about Kashmir. Amen. Talk to me about Cuba. Amen. Talk to me about China. You can talk to me about China. Amen. If you really want to, you can talk to me about North Korea. Amen. But especially talk to me about those things that you know or that you've been on crying to God about. Because Father's opened up an amazing doors, which is basically over this past couple of weeks has been Cuba and has been Kashmir and Cuba. Don't give me some lofty, crazy notion that somehow God came and told you to go do something else. It's just not God. It's not the way he functions. It's not the way he operates. Get a clue. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Listen to the Lord. He's given us an opportunity of things to do together, to go and labor in the harvest together. That's why he raises up local churches. That's why he brings companies of peoples together. That's why the body of Christ is defined as a body based upon each person within the church moving under the authority of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost for a single purpose and a single cause in a single direction. Amen. It's really all about the harvest. Amen. It's really all about the harvest. I mean, just to believe, just to believe for five minutes, just to believe for five minutes that what we're doing at the Mission Training Center to be able to have something exist for the next 200 years, to, send more, to raise up more missionaries among indigenous people's group, and you can't see that and feel that and give your life to that, come on, people. You need to, you need to get on your knees and start praying through whatever it is that's clogging up your ability to see and understand and think properly. Because God will remedy it. I promise you, He will remedy it. So you're moving together with the direction of the Lord. You know how to move with the Holy Ghost. You understand how to honor the things that God is doing and submit yourself to leadership and authority and move to His marching orders instead of trying to look for your own drum and create your own beat. You hear me? You hear me? In large part, a lot of it comes down to nothing but pride, self-will arrogance and those things will keep us from the beautiful thing that father wants us to have we don't want it we don't want anything we want lowliness yeah. meekness yeah. submission yeah. everyone want to learn it because at the end of every event in every situation it's not about my interaction your interaction with me or my interaction with you it's about my interaction with the Holy Ghost. He's using those things to train me to be fully yielded and submitted to Him. Yeah. I'm going to get it right. Yeah. I'm going to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. 
You're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. We're going to do this. Father wants to cause great exploits of faith to be manifested through your life. You've got to get it right. You can't be off in left field when God's called us to center field. You've got to get it right. You can't be on your own focus when God has given us His focus. You've got to get it right. If you want faith to work, if you want the miracles and the signs and wonders and the demonstration of the power of God and the exploits of God to be made manifest in your life. Thank you, Jesus. If you'll walk in divine principle and you'll learn how to walk in divine order, I'm going to tell you right now, moving in the Holy Ghost gets easy. If you do not give yourself to divine principles, you're going to be misled, misdirected, you're going to hear wrong. And the same course goes with divine order. If you don't understand how to move in divine order, you're going to constantly be distracted, turned away, do your own thing. You better get yourself in a place of being a servant. A servant to serve the interest that God, the Holy Ghost, has placed before you right here in the midst of this church. I don't know. There are not a lot of churches that have the unique opportunities that this church has right now, especially when it comes to places like Cuba and Kashmir. And Nepal. You know, they asked me to come to Nepal and do a crusade. And I'm thinking, you know, Lord, I'd like to send someone to do it. It came to mind. But then what happens if I got 15, 20 people, places to go? Because it's really, it's really come to that. Then do I have 15, 20 people who've proven themselves faithful? Not to me, to God. Because, listen, just like you've learned to flow in the anointing because you got into the scrap of it. You got into the hard parts of what it means to be faithful, the places where you felt unwanted, rejected, unable, can't do it, and you push through it. You don't get, listen, you don't get it anywhere else than in the crucible of opposition. First thing the other night, wanted to to, they wanted to come and compliment me, an older person, he said, listen, you know, I'm very careful about this, but because I know sometimes it's, the problem's not in the compliment, but in the way that people hear the compliment, because he was going to lay something pretty heavy on me. I said, listen to me. I've been through the school of how to take compliments. Do you want to know what it is? Persecution. When persecution doesn't bother you, compliments don't either. When persecution bo bothers you and you have problems with persecution, you're going to have problems with compliments. Hmm? Believe me, people. You're going to have to get, you know, what God wants to do with you, Scott and Marlene, what God wants to do with you, James, Sandy, and everybody else. I could name everybody else, but they're running. And I know some of you, uh, some, of, some of the rest of you are doing things. I know that Duane and Emily, you guys are doing old folks ministry right now, right? And there's, there's some other people doing some things like that where you're gathering people, you're going there, and you're being faithful to minister to them. You do it on Sunday mornings. That's where, God, that's where God begins to develop within you the ability, the capacity to move in the anointing. I mean, Daniel told me, he said, wow, the meeting was powerful. The glory and the authority of heaven in the house. Some people heard about the meeting, come, drove an hour away from the mountain, in the mountains to come to the meeting. Just God started to bring people, started gathering people. Somebody's got to be faithful. They've got to be faithful to a few things. The, you know, it seem, doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, but you're just so excited because you're right there doing what God's called you to do. Hallelujah. And you will not, you will not move. You don't need the praises of men. You got, you're just caught away. Because I'm going to have 15, 20 people, 15, 20 different places send people. And you got to be ready to go. And, I, I, you know, I see it. Jacqueline, I see it. It's already got all of you. You're going to go. I know I've got, I know I've got Ruth Ann and Kate. I know. I've got Elizabeth. I know there's some of the rest of you. I, I want you to, I, you've, got to have, you've got to have the sharpness of the flow. I can tell by the way you pray in the Holy Ghost. I can tell. I can just tell by the way you pray in the Holy Ghost. Of whether or not you're ready to stand there and, and, and present Jesus Christ on that level. Of 
because really reality of it is it expresses the strength and the flow and the authority in your life it does because when you get in those positions the enemy is going to come out against you in far far worse things that he's coming out against you right now and if you've not learned how to walk if you not learn how you know to walk with the footman what are you going to do in the day that you would have to be placed out there running with the horseman you'll faint you'd be overwhelmed you got to get yourself in a place where it costs you something where you got to pour out where you got to rely upon the anointing to see signs and wonders and miracles to see finances come in to see the sick healed you gotta get yourself in that crucible otherwise the anointing won't develop of course you can hook up with us if you hook up with us right because that's what that's all my kids did they just hooked up right and you just you just get empowered with it mm -hmm. it's true and we want you to there's nobody we're leaving out and nobody we're leaving. you just you, you can't you can't run with me as your peers and hook up my kids don't run she knows my kids don't run with me as as though I were their peer Huh? They run with me as though I was their parent. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just want to be peers. You know? yeah. Ain't God's divine order. Yeah. So, well, I'm just co laborers with you. No, you're not. If you didn't say that, you might be. But just by saying it, you're not. Honestly, it's true. Because I, want, I don't want to leave anybody out. You labors together with me, but you're supposed to be first and foremost understanding that the Holy Ghost has got a leadership that you're supposed to follow here. And he's supposed to reverence and respect and hook up with, with all that's in you. And don't let anything get in the way because that's really learning how to submit yourself to the Spirit of the Lord, how to walk in divine order, how to walk in divine principles, to be able to move and flow together in the things the Father's given us to do, to be that much more fruitful, to be that much more effective. It isn't about somebody bigger than others. It's just about somebody's been given, equipped, and given ability. Hmm? I don't see any. I don't see anybody really resenting the general. You know, he's there. He's been trained to do what he's doing. He's been given the ability to do what he's doing. They're not resenting the. They may not like the sergeant, but they're not resenting him. In the military, she's the military example. Hallelujah. Sabro <sighs> bukotea. And you have to understand that this is one of the areas where the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal but mighty through God is very important because the enemy tries to do things to detach you, distract you, turn you away, do your own things to the doing of God's thing. Today, tonight, cry out to you, do God's thing. Do God's thing. You can step into a realm of faith. You step in the realm of faith. And through that faith, Father will give you authority to reach, who knows, a hundred people? Yeah. Might give you an authority to reach a thousand. Might give you a vision of getting a bus and going and filling it up. Who knows what all the Lord will show you what to do. He'll give you a faith and insight to do it because you're willing to labor in the kingdom and labor in the ministry and you recognize there is a richness here that people long to have in other states and other nations of ministry and you want other people to be involved with it and plus on top because you know what that's going to result in their lives and maybe maybe a hundred goes but ten stay you don't live in faith and unbelief like oh they're not going to they're going to come and not stay it's just unbelief what, what nonsense is that God told you to sow the seed. All the stuff that people buy into that are not the Word of God. False things, false ideas. I'm here tonight to break this thing off of you. To understand why He gave you this authority. Why He gave you this divine ability. How to move and function in it. On very basic levels. And if we'll get the basic levels, God will skill you now to do it even in a greater way to see great exploits. Great exploits through your life. That's what we want. God never brought anybody in the kingdom to be ordinary. 
He brought everybody in the kingdom to be extraordinary, but you're going to have to learn to obey God, the Holy Ghost, and walk in the Word and do it His way. These things you've got to be passionate for, you've got to be hungry for, you've got to be desperate for, because they're so sacred. You would, you would utilize them wrong. You would violate them with any less of a passion. Begin to cry out to God. There is no end to the kind of faith, kinds of signs and wonders, the kind of supernatural working. That he, will fun, that he will develop in your life. And of course, many of you have heard me say this many times, but I'm going to say it to you again. I might say it to you maybe in a little bit different way tonight. But the Lord wants the eyes of your understanding to be open. He wants to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that you might be able to see your inheritance in him. No, that's not true. That's the way we think of it. But that's not true. So that you might be able to see his inheritance in you. In other words, that you might be able to see the authority and the ability that he's given you, which he brought to pass when he raised Jesus from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly place. People, you have not seen the authority and the power that Father has given to them. The inheritance, in other words, that he has in us as his heirs and his co-inheritors. But if you let God, the Spirit of the Lord, begin to minister to you and let His Word have place in your life. See, the gospel was preached to Israel. It didn't profit them because they didn't, it wasn't mixed with faith. God wants His Word to become to you more than concepts and ideas. He wants His Word to become to you something that is a fire on the inside of you that causes you with great passion and determination to lay hold on what He said. To do what, to rise up with great confidence. Say, we are well able. Three amens, four, eight, five shouts, kind of. And everybody else still sitting there. Come on, get bold, man. You guys need to get bold. How many times you got to be told in one single night? Do I need to raise my right hand when you're supposed to shout and my left hand when you're supposed to be silent? I'll train you. I'll do whatever it takes to train you. Come on, people. Yes. Get out of your intimidation. Yes. Get out of your fear. Because all that is is an evidence that you live in a self realm. All that is is evidence that you're void of the passions of God. And I'm not going to believe that. But it is evidence. I refuse to believe the evidence. You get passionate for God. Yeah. Don't you be in a prison of your own self-interest. Confined to what you can think and what you can do. Come on, people. I, I pray in the name of Jesus that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm consumed with it. I'm consumed with seeing people's lives changed. I know how Father feels. Where he pours out his soul and he gets one or two people to respond. He pours out all that he has. One, two people respond. Many nights we go home and we say, Father, I know how you feel. May I never respond that way to you. May you get all my heart and all my passion. May I wake up in the morning and run more wide open than I ever have. All I got to do if I'm feeling tired or weary just start preaching a sermon like this to myself. Just listen to the YouTube. I'm ready to go. Book the ticket. Let's do this thing. As praying, John Hyde said, I'd rather burn out than rust out. Thank you, Jason. I could hear your voice. Everyone else was blended in the murmur. Let your voice stand out. Don't be silent. Don't be lost in the crowd. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's before God that your responses right now are being measured. 
before the fathers, before the Almighty, the giver of all things. You better step up with your mouth. You better step up with your praise. You better step up with your agreement. You better step up with your shout. You better step up with your willingness. You better step up with your obedience. Or you're going to be left out. And I'm just not willing to stand by and let you be left out. I'm just not willing to stand by and let you be left out. Not willing. You're too needed. Too needed. Too needed. Too needed. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been around. I don't care how little you've been around. You're too needed. God, the Holy Ghost is pleading with you. God's pleading with you. Papa's pleading with you tonight. Going to raise up Anna. Going to raise up Naomi. Take nations in Jesus' name. Daniel, summer is already moving. Raise up Michaela, she's moving. Laying down her line, giving it all. Praise God. Couldn't do it without her. Left everything, set everything else aside, said, we'll go do this. Let's do this. Praise God for it. Hallelujah. I love, I love to see the missionaries that I see on the field People that could have done anything. They could have, they could have had, they could have pursued anything that anyone else pursues materially. And they said, no, I'm going to go to Asia. I'm going to go to Cambodia. I'm going to go to Angola. I'm going to go to China. I'm going to go here, there. I'm going to give myself, I'm going to give my life in the kingdom. I'm going to pour out my life as an offering upon the altar of God. I'm not going to live for myself. People who labor in ministries to work to bring people together to bring them in to take care of them to make sure that the ministry is going I was just so blessed you know seeing Jeremiah get on the little train out there him and Julie and that has faithfully got the train going you know praise God for that and everybody who labors in ministry to, to make things work here you know whether or not you have time to go gather people i praise god for those who labor but for, i'm going to tell you right now and can tell you there's a phrase we have for all of those who are working really hard and running wide open <laughs> you can do more she's really tired <laughs> we can do more lord it's a phrase we say it all the time she's just tired so right I understand. Get your eyes popped up. Hallelujah. I just want to plead with you. I want you to understand. I want you, I want to break through. If you're getting sad or mad, you're just bottling yourself up not to hear. If you're being intimidated and discouraged, it's just you. It's just you. It's a manifestation of your problem. Get delivered tonight. Amen. And some of it's just a consecration, if you will. Say, so, you know what? I'm going to be so high-minded anymore. I'm going to be so self-absorbed anymore. I'm on I'm, no, I'm myself. One day, a Presbyterian preacher named Jonathan Goforth was reading John 14, 12. Anyone who believes these works which I do, shall they do also in greater works. And there his heart had been so prepared in seeking God, because he was already going, he was already running. Falls to his knees and collapses before God and says, I haven't even done these works. And that moment, that moment of crisis became a moment of beginning to say, okay, God, I need you. And all of a sudden, when it comes from that deep, Father answers and fills you. Fills you. And, and he, you know, he did things that you write history books about. We just did things in the past four weeks that you write history books about. We just... With, we were just with the emperor of, Cong of the Congo. We were just with the kings of Zambia. We were just with the leaders of Cuba, the largest gathering of leaders and pastors in Cuba since Fidel Castro took over. People. Papa wants to use you. I mean, how can I? 
How many more ways can I say this? I want to shake you from your slumber, from your sleep. I want to shake you from your despondency, from your distractions. I want you to understand that if you've got compromises going on in your life, it'll rob you of your passions in God. If you allow substitutes to go on in your life, they're from the things of the, of the demonic. It will steal from you the flow of the things of the Holy Ghost. Uh, just come over here, people. Just come over here and begin to believe. Look upon the har harvest fields that are ripe and the harvest. Begin to believe that God would use you to shake this region right here, right now. Every one of you. And it can't be done your own way. It's got to be done His way. You've got to rely on Him. He'll fill you with faith. It takes wisdom. It's not earthly to reach the lost. It's a supernatural faith that God gives to anyone who asks and seeks Him. Suddenly you begin to do it. I had a few people who were willing to take on the assignment to go out into the parks and to do what I was doing in the parks. Guess what? Those who did it and did it faithfully are now preaching to nations. Doors are opening up right, left, and center. Amen. Kelly, Angelo, come on now. What are you going to do? It's not like the opportunity hasn't been set before you. Not like because that's where you get trained. That's where you get trained to give an altar call for people to come to salvation. That's where you get trained to flow in the anointing. That's where you get trained to move in faith. That's where you get trained to rely upon the Holy Ghost. That's where you get developed with a greater strength and ability to speak on His behalf. Do it, Michael. You do this, Michael. Michael, you do this. And I'm so blessed because I look around and I see what the Father is raising up. Zoe, Clara, Jacqueline. I see what the Father is raising up. I'm not, I'm not leaving anybody out. I'm not leaving you out, Brittany, you Holy Ghost woman. I'm not leaving anyone out. I'm just seeing. I can see. I can see some, I see some passion. I see some fire in certain people's eyes. Yes, I'm doing this thing. If I was sitting in your place, I would be far more valiant than you. And I pray that you begin to grab a hold of something in the Spirit of God that makes you bigger than you. Because I tell you, the Holy Ghost is valiant. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty. And if you'll stop living your own life, you'll have His life. You stop going in your own responses and you'll have His response. You stop living by your own insight and you'll have his insight. You, start living by, you stop living by your own skills and you'll have his skills. Amen. The choice is yours. Amen. You decide. You decide. It's a beautiful thing with the people that are broken and humble and meek and lowly. They have no, nothing else to fall back on. Catherine Coleman said, I didn't have a voice to sing. I didn't have an appearance that was pretty. I didn't have a stature that allowed me to do much in life. I didn't have very much smarts to get ahead in, in those things that men achieve naturally. All I had was to give everything to Jesus. And look at what history books. It's never too late. You do not have to live in the past of your failure. You don't have to live in the past of your unwillingness and your reluctance to get up and go no matter what it costs you. Oh, Rabasi Kitala. Tell you right now, we're going to do great things. We shall do valiantly. For it is the Lord who casts down all our enemies and makes a way before us, who empowers us and strengthens us. Amen. Tonight, when you have and receive communion, I want you to understand this is how you're supposed to be living. 
And in the blood of Jesus Christ, you receive great boldness and confidence because everything that was an offense and everything that separated you from him and everything that kept you from receiving what he had to give to you and what he has to give to you has been removed. It's been taken away. It's been washed away. And by the blood, you've been made holy and acceptable to God. You received his righteousness. You received his favor. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, when you begin to eat the bread, it represents his body. Recognize, I'm living by the heavenly manna. Every day, Israel, who walked as a company of God's people, had manna from heaven. Jesus said, no, Moses didn't give you the true manna. I am the bread of life. Every day, as the people of God, we get to have fresh from Father's table bread of life where we get to live by the very life and power and authority and strength and person of Almighty God, Jesus Christ. I want you to think of it that way. I want you to understand it that way. It will remove from you intimidation. It will remove from you discouragement. It will remove from you failure. It will remove from you uh, inability. It gives you great divine power and ability. And great boldness and confidence in the faith. You'll find yourself saying, I can do all things. You'll find yourself saying, I have access. You'll find and recognize, my goodness, I am so empowered by God. I am one of his own. I'm washed in the blood. I'm bought with a price. I belong to Almighty God. I'm living by his life. I'm living by his power. I live by the very breath of God. I live by the very spirit of the Lord. Man, you can't walk around thinking that and be the same person you've been. You can't walk around believing that and having that and be relegated to an earthly, human, despondent existence. I want you to start living with blood. I want you to start living with a cup in one hand of the blood of Jesus and the bread of life in the other. All day long, living by him. Oh, bread will bring you such strength. Oh, oh the blood will bring you such refreshing. refreshing. Ah, and the life of God. Hallelujah. Ah, what provision, what grace. What provision. Woo! What grace. What provision. by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That doesn't tax us, doesn't take away our strength, gives us strength. <laughs> doesn't tire us out, refreshes us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, live in it. Live in that praise. Live in that response. Live in that shout. Don't you let anything discourage you and close your praise off and shut your mouth and stop up the rivers. Don't you allow it. It's time for people to stand up more bold than ever before in this place. It's time for people to prepare themselves for the things of God. I'm telling you right now, there is, it's easy to prophesy in here. It's easy to flow in tongues and interpretation of tongues in this house. I just want you to hook up and let God show you how. I want this section to stand up, come receive right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to start using non-bread. I don't want to use this anymore. Does everybody understand? Everybody gets this? Who bought this bread? I don't want to buy this no more. I want non-bread. 
this, this doesn't sound proper, but it's good bread. Yep. It's just a Hindi, Hindi thing. Love you. Walk and live by the blood and bread. I love you. Walk with God. Live by the blood and bread. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and by the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Isn't that powerful? Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Walk with Him. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Amen. Amen. The first, uh, second person told me you would, you would. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Third person. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Take it. Amen. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Everybody else who didn't say I will, you can say I will now. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Go ahead and take it. You reach out and you take it. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Just, the ima just imagine you actually in power to walk with God. Unbelievable, eh? Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. This next section, come. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. You have to take it. Amen. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. You have to take it. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. See, God demands that we receive. You with me? That's why I say you take it, same as receive. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Nouns. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. We've got to help you with this one. Aunt Lily will help you, okay, baby? Aunt Lily got, has yours. Walk with God, live by, hey, walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Amen. I will. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Amen. I believe that. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Amen. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. 
Hallelujah. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. What is this? Tortilla. Huh? It's not tortilla. You fell. Walk with God. It is the obvious. It is the tortilla. But you did the same thing last time. Mama's got to talk to you some more. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hey. What's up? There was no response. I didn't get an amen, I will, or nothing. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Uh, Adam, how did things go with your body on the ranch? Okay, at least you could breathe. You weren't basically suffocating. Well, in the name of Jesus, no more. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God. Live by the bread and the blood. Hallelujah. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. Walk with God, live by the bread and the blood. What is this? Yes, sir. Walk with God, live by the body and the bread. What is this? Go ahead. It's what, baby? What is it? She said the body. Is the body and blood of Jesus? Walk with God and live by the bread and the blood of Jesus. Walk with God and live by the body. I will. And walk with God and live by the body and the blood of Jesus. Walk with God. Live by the body in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Everybody in here has received communion. Yes? You have it? Bread of life. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses gave you not that you bread. I am the bread of life. He that eats this bread. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that every person in this place recognizes that these are the emblems of our fellowship, of our union, of our walk with God every day, that this is not some kind of a religious exercise offline of the reality of this life we have in Him, that this is just simply a means, a description, a type to help us to begin to more fully understand the mystery of the fellowship 
something that goes so far beyond what we can even begin to think or ask, it's hard for us to even believe it. But if we'll just walk around all day with the bread of life, hallelujah, ha, mm -mm 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 kind of thing, huh? The bread of life, mm, huh? Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. The bread of life. Mm. And the cup of the covenant. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. He said, this is my blood which is given to you, for you so that your sins would be washed away, removed, erased. We sing unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And all day long, we're just, mm, mm, bread of life, mm, 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 bread of life, living by Christ Jesus' life. His very existence is the means by which now I move in His authority, I move in His grace, I move in His glory, I move in the same relationship that He has with the Father. Oh, when you begin to believe what God has given to us is an unspeakable gift, not because of any righteousness which we have done, but because of his great love where which he loved us, this mercy of God that extended such grace to us. Hallelujah. I'm living by the body of Jesus. It's where I draw my life, my power, my strength, my ability. It's where I draw my acceptance, my, my position, my fellowship, my experience. It all, every bit of it. Amen. Leave nothing out. The blood. Mm. I am washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, and my garments spotless and white. Whiter I am white. In the blood. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Ah, my honor say. Whoa. And I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me, and I have access to the Father. And oh, I have the love of God all over me, because the Father Himself supplied that blood for me. He supplied that mercy for me. He supplied that means by which I am continually washed and cleansed. So that forever I will sing the song of the redeemed unto him who washed us, unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us priests and kings and we shall reign with him. People of the world is waiting for you to tell them. There's a lost and dying world right there, right now, waiting for you to tell them. I'm not, I'm telling you, I don't have some kind of freaked out, flaked out news. That's a lie from hell. I've got the means of salvation. I've got what people are desperate to hear. And some of you need to get right with God tonight on the subject. You act like you have some kind of, you know, third class, low class message of salvation. People, it's about time you realize that you have in your mouth the riches and the inheritance of God, the power at work of God. She upset about the fact she doesn't have a cup. She wants more. You quit throwing a fuss. You quit throwing a fuss. I shouldn't give it to you. You quit throwing a fuss. In Jesus' name. I'm too, too much of a softy. When I was younger, I wouldn't have given it to her. But I ran out of discipline for the grandkids kind of thing. Somebody else is going to have to take up the torch. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. She's thirsty. And I just understand it. You know, I can't fault her for being thirsty. You see what I'm saying? Somebody said, well, that, you didn't do that for my grandchild. No, I didn't. It's the French benefits. Hallelujah. 
some would say that's partiality and preference. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when God gives you the church and you the minister, you can have such partiality and preference too, should you so desire. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. People might be standing outside saying, Aaron, your sons are getting to eat of the, eat of the, of the sacrifices. Yes, they are. Well, our sons don't get to. No, they don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father has given us all, made us all partakers of these things. Yes. See, I'll make sure she understands what she's doing over here. You know, I don't know what everybody else is going to do with their family. Because I'm not in you. I'm not there. You know, but I, I am in this. You can see, that's yeah. the difference. Just to help you understand. I'm still just over here enjoying this. I'm thinking about going back for some more. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is holy, and he made me holy. God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, and we worship him alone. Alone I'm in And he's in me I'm in him And he commanded me to be here God is holy And he made me holy God is righteous Oh, God is almighty, and we worship him alone, alone. I'm in him, and he's in me. I'm in him, and he commanded me to be. Communion. That's what it's saying all the time. Hallelujah. Kier Ramon Saranieta. Kier Ramon Sakirana. Kier Ramon Sakirani. Everybody stand with me, will you? Is God good? Is there anybody in this place, after all of this, somehow you don't feel like God loves you? Somehow you feel like you've been left out. Somehow you're having a problem. Knowing and believing the love that God has for us. Do you know how you can dwell in God all day? So just know and believe His love that He has for you. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the emblems of it. Man, when you're dwelling in God, you're protected, you're well provided for. Hallelujah. I don't care what happens, you're good to go. Flame cannot kindle upon you unless He says so. You pass through the water and not drown? Come on, man. Ah, you don't need to worry about finances ever again. You don't have to worry about all the things that everybody else seeks after and to concern yourself with it. You're free now to just go and live the glorious life, going everywhere, declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ with power and authority and signs and wonders as the representatives of heaven. What an honor. What an honor. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I, I would really, I think it'd be good, you know, if you just set out at your house, just set out a cup full of, of communion and some, some bread, set it out there. Go worship the Lord and give thanks to Him and Take a bite of that which represents the heavenly bread and take a sip of the communion cup and be reminded continually. Just be reminded. 
Somebody said, well, you're supposed to do communion together collectively. Yes, that's true. And what I'm describing is something that we would be doing collectively. It's just we wouldn't be doing it together in a company. I've never told people this before, but I, this is something I want to get across. I, I'm, I'm, I'm desperate before the Lord to grab a hold of you into a pl- and get you into a place where you recognize and understand what God has done for us. Because when you get past your condemnation, you're going to get into signs and wonders and miracles. When you get past your self-interest and all the things that belong to your shame and your guilt, oh, my, 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 my. You don't get yourself over in a place of, a, of enjoying a, the streams from heaven, the provision that only God supplies. And just, you know, just understand. That's what, these, that's what the cup and the bread represents. I'm living by the, I'm living by the very body of Jesus. Hallelujah. For those of you who are songwriters, it's a great song to write. I'm living by the bread of life. My communion is his body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm living by the blood of Jesus. This fellowship is in his blood. All my righteousness, all my holiness, all my access to the Father. It's how I receive God's love. Believing what he did for me at Calvary. Believing what he supplied for me through Christ Jesus, his own son. It's how I receive his love. It's flowing in this realm of the Holy Ghost. That which Jesus championed for me. The gift he won from on high and poured out upon me abundantly. Eating his flesh, this bread of heaven, drinking this cup, the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. There's people watching me right now. You've got fear, anxiety, torment in your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command that fear and that anxiety and that torment to go from you now in Jesus' name. It releases you right now as I'm talking. It releases right now as I'm speaking. Right now receive the comfort of the Holy Ghost into your spirit. Those of you who've never called upon the name of the Lord Jesus, do it now. His blood is there to wash you, cleanse you. The Holy Ghost is there to fill you, to overwhelm you, to empower you. Receive right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody in the house wants prayer for anything, you come. We'll pray with you and for you. God touch you. Hallelujah.